Zoning Board of Appeal for Tuesday, September 12th is now in session. Just a reminder, please make sure your cell phones are off. And if you need to have any conversations, please take them outside of the room. If you are here to speak in support or in opposition of a project, put your name and address on the record. We are here on a fact-finding mission, so give us new information. Use your time well and give us new information. If somebody has already stated the reason that you are either in, oppose, in opposition or in support of a project, please just put your name and address on the record. In conformance with the open meeting law, I'm going to remind you that this meeting is being live streamed. Mr. Fortune. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning. Uh, can we get that door closed in the back, please? It's loud in here. Make sure you can hear me. I'm going to call the first case called Board Final Arbiter, calling BOA 444 956 240 Mount Vernon Street. Oops, for the record, um, I need to refuse myself. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning. Um, Brian Connolly, attorney for uh, Bayside Club Hotel, Mount Vernon Street, uh, here for the Board's Final Arbiter. Uh, as you know, this is a project, an expansion of the existing Bayside Double Tree Hotel that this board previously approved. We've made some minor revisions to the plans based on review with our operator. No new relief is being requested from the board. Uh, ISD has reviewed the plans and recommended that we submit to you for uh, review and approval of the board as final arbiter. And can we turn it over to our project architect, Larry Spang, to describe the minor changes? Good morning. Um, Larry Spang from. Arrow Street Architects, we're working with the folks on the hotel expansion. Uh, there have been some uh, minor changes to the plan, which has resulted from discussions with the hotel operator as the project has developed. Uh, we, as a result of those moving of bits and pieces, we have uh, slightly increased the number of guest rooms and the amount of meeting space. We've slightly reduced the number of seats in the restaurant, and we have uh, very slightly increased the size of the uh, expansion, a uh, little less than 2% total. Can you simply quantify what slightly means? Yes, of what course. What was it before? How of course. So originally in 2015, the plans that were reviewed and approved by this board had 97 guest rooms. We have added seven new guest rooms for a total of 104. Uh, we had originally 6,000 square feet of assembly and meeting rooms. Uh, we've added a few, uh, right, uh, we've added a few conference room sizes, uh, adding a net square footage of about 2,300 square feet. Uh, how much? Uh, What's the total square footage in the adding? 6,000 and we're adding 20. No, no, the whole building. Oh, for the whole building, I'm sorry. Uh, we are adding. 70,900 square feet, uh, previously approved was 69,500. And, and the addition of the, uh, of the square footage doesn't uh, trigger any change in the variance? Correct. Absolutely. Correct. Well, height remain the same? And the footprint of the building remain the same? Uh, roughly, yes. Roughly, yes. There's been a slight tweak to the, to the footprint, but, um, and one of the things that we are asking for is relief on the side and rear yards, uh, primarily for overhangs. Uh, this is not for the building wall itself, but for some overhangs. I thought there were no additional requests for relief. Uh, we are, sorry, you want no, to? That's right. yeah, no, all, we've, we have previously uh, obtained from the board the side yard and, and all the setbacks okay, that we so need. That, that there are, there's just awnings, for example, and um, you know features such as that. Okay. Yeah. Previously, we were at three feet. Now we're coming down to a foot and a half on the side yard. And on the rear yard, we were at 15 feet. We are coming down to five and a quarter feet. Again, that's- Is that approved already? For, 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 again, Larry, you're just the, the, we're talking about awnings, overhangs, details. The, the fundamental building footprint is where it was before. Okay. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. Now, Mr. Pisani, do you, do you have the new set of prints? I do, I do. I had the, the opportunity to previously review it also. Okay, how, how are the drawings? They're fine. I mean, the changes are clearly de minimis. Have you have you picked the contractor? No, um, we want to get your blessing on the these edits, and then we're going to finish 
uh, design and go to get the contractor at that point. Yeah. Is there uh, have a motion to the board? I can make a motion to grant the relief requested. It's clearly consistent in the dominion of action. Uh, Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you. If you'd like to wait, we'll wait for Madam Chair to get back. I will call the next case, though. Call of the Chair, Coach BOA 664 869 726 Metropolitan Avenue. Is Metropolitan Avenue here? Okay, we'll hold that. Calling the next case with building code, calling BOA 714-957-10 Gloucester Street. <clears throat> this is in regards to a build a new roof deck for Unit 3. Eighth edition of CMR, Chapter 10, means of egress. In buildings four or more stories above grade, one stairway shall extend to the roof surface. Article 100913.1. Roof access, where a stairway is provided to a roof, access to the roof shall be provided through a penthouse complying with section 1509.2. The eighth edition of CMR, chapter 10, means of egress, headroom stairways shall have a minimum headroom clearance of 80 inches, measured vertically from the line. 1012.4, continuity of a handrail, gripping services shall be continuous. 1012.6, a handrail extension, the handrail shall re shall return to a wall, guard, or walking surface, or shall be continuous. 1013.1, where required, guard shall be located along an open side walking, walking surfaces. And 2406.1, the human impact loads, individual glazed areas, including glass mirrors. Name and address of the record, please. Good morning, my name is Ken Lyons. I'm for the petitioner. Uh, the property is 10 Gloucester Street. This is David McWan of Meyer & Meyer Architectural Firm. So please tell us um, about this, uh, the request that you have before us. Yes, good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, everyone. So we have here a, a conflict between the zoning code and the building code. So we are in one of the historic districts on Gloucester Street in the Back Bay. The Back Bay Architectural Commission has approved a roof deck, uh, and they much prefer a hatch instead of uh, a head house. Uh, for historical reasons. We applied to ISD for the hatch, and it is my experience that sometimes these hatches are approved in the historical district. Uh, it's a three, the, the city has the property at a three and a half story property, and the roof deck is private, not public. It's solely accessed. Let, let me just backtrack. So the, yes. the, the, the roof deck is as of right? Is the it an the as of right project? It, it is uh, as of right, correct. And that we've already been before the Back Bay Architectural Commission, and they have given their permission okay. uh, for us to construct the roof deck. Yes. Okay. okay. So can you please uh, tell us if, if you've resolved any of these uh, requests, or are all these requests still in place? Well, the, the main issue uh, before us today is uh, the hatch versus the head house. We, the applicant, is very willing to undertake any safety precautions that ISD recommends, and, and we will do so uh, to the fullest extent possible. Uh, the only issue really is the hatch versus the head house. What type, what type of hatch is it? Is it a flat hatch, a slope hatch? What happens with the rail? David? So it's a, it's a mostly flat hatch. The, but it has railings that extend up when you open it. So in other words, as you open the door of the hatch, the railings go into place to allow you to get up. Once you get onto the roof deck, there is a permanent railing for your safety around. So your yeah. safety on the stairs is resolved by the railings. Is it railings. the vertical component of the rail or the slope component of the rail that goes up? In other words, it, it has a rail starting down here. It yep. comes until it hits the hatch, and then either it extends or what? Uh, it essentially folds up from, from the stairs. Okay. 
And did you consider a sloped hatch, which makes it a little bit easier? Uh, the, the, for us, what, when you hit the roof plane, if I put a sloped hatch, it will make it, I won't be able to get into the stairs as. No, but if you use a sloped hatch, instead yeah. of it opening this way, it opens. Oh, no, it opens that way. I'm sorry, sir, I didn't say it correctly. It opens to the right, side, right. Not, not the lengthwise. Right, right. I apologize for not being clear. Great. Uh, Madam Chairman, to the point, I mean, this is a classic uh, conflict uh, between historic and, and, and illegal. Um, I'm willing, I, the board, I think, would be very comfortable making a motion to grant the building code relief on this for the following reason. Uh, taking testimony that it is, in fact, a three and a half story building and not a full four. Uh, and, and on that basis, All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. You're all set. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you, members of the board. Before I call the 930 hearings, is Metropolitan Avenue here for board uh, final uh, board, call of the chair? Okay. Are there any deferrals or withdrawals for 930? Address, please. It's 8 Chestnut Street in Charlestown. Melissa Doherty. Sure. Uh, for the record, calling BOA 739020, 8 Chestnut Street. Name and address for the record, please. My name is Melissa Brennan. I live at 8 Chestnut Street in Charlestown. Is this what you're requesting? So I'm requesting a 600-foot addition. Are you requesting a deferral? Deferral, yes. Okay, on what, on what basis? So I had my community meeting, and I have two neighbors that would like view renditions to see how the addition looks. And I also had to meet with the BPDA, because this is previously a BRA parcel. And the architect, Alexa Pernard, wants us to narrow the slope of the mansard a little bit. So I have to do new drawings, then do the view renditions, and then have another community meeting. Hold on one minute. May I have a motion? Motion. motion. There a second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The date, please? Uh, we have 1031, October 31st. Will that give you enough time? Um, the architect asked for November just to give him enough time. And we can do that. We can do November 14th. Sure. Okay. Thank you. You're all set. Good luck. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals for 930? Madam Chair, we do have a case that is withdrawing, so I'll call it for the record. Calling BOA 659-900, 28 Hancock Street. So I'll make a motion for denial without prejudice. We have a letter for withdrawal. Second. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. All those in favor? We have a letter in here. Wait, wait. No, 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 no. That's not a withdrawal. And that's not a withdrawal. Hold on, hold on. Oh, are you requesting a deferral on it? No. Okay. No, I thought we just said it was a deferral. It's not a deferral. Okay. I mean, a withdrawal. So, so we'll, let's let's hold that and just oh, go right through our process. The handcuff. Which one was it? Yeah. Who was short? So you moving forward? You want to take a look at this? In the meantime, let's go ahead with our agenda. So there are no other deferrals or withdrawals. Call the first case, calling BOA 719-828-24 Porter Street. This is to change arcs from a two-story structure, 18 by 45, with dry cleaners to a three-story structure of 18 foot by 35, with dry cleaning on the first floor and two residential units above. The violations, Article 53, Section 12, insufficient rear yard setback, Article 53, Section 12, excessive FAR, Article 53, Section 56, off-street parking, none is proposed, and Article 53, Section 11, two family on a second story and above is forbidden in a, in a CC uh, subdistrict. Name and address for the record, please. Patrick Mahoney of Adams and Morancy with a business address of 350 West Broadway. I'm going to call so please uh, tell us what you're requesting. Um, Madam Chair, we're, it's an existing uh, two-story commercial unit with a mezzanine level uh, being changed. The existing building is a dry cleaner. It's no longer will be in use. The first floor, as proposed, will be commercial space of approximately 775 square feet, and then two residential units uh, on each level above. So there'll be a one-story addition to this 
to this building and the two residential units um, consist of two bedroom, two baths, one's 526 square feet and the other is 537 square feet. And um, one of the violations is lack of parking. Is there any way of accommodating parking on this lot? There isn't. It's attached an attached building on both sides. There is no parking um, proposed, nor would they be able to, to be. There is an existing municipal lot in the rear, and, uh, and as a result, parking wasn't a concern throughout the community process. Okay. And then wa walking through the violations, can you briefly tell us um, what's required and what you're proposing? Certainly. The, uh, the floor area ratio it is a violation. One is what's required. It's a community commercial district. And we are in, in excess of that at 1.5. The uh, open space is essentially met by the top floor. It's 180 square feet provided, and 100 square feet is what's required. So, so that is met. The, the rear yard violation is the second means of egress and deck from the units are right on the rear lot line. There is a passageway. So a, a shallow, a through lot exception could apply, but we were cited for rear yard. Is there a roof deck proposed with this too? Just a rear deck. Just a rear deck. How are the plans, Mr. Pisani? Drive right. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, John Ellis and Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, we'd like to go on record in support. This project has been through the community process, and as the applicant noted, there is a municipal lot nearby. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Judy Ellis, the council, and the mayor's office, since this applicant did go through the community process, and the mayor's office of the board, 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 and the mayor's with continued BPDA design review. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, good luck. Calling the next case, calling BOA 654-8617 Parker Street. This is a change of occupancy from a single family dwelling to a three family dwelling and complete renovation of the existing single family home. Construct a new three story addition on the existing dwelling. The violations of Article 62, Section 25, Roof Structure Restrictions, and Article 62, Section 8, Usable Open Space is Insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Good morning Mr. Chairman, sir. members of the board. Uh, John McDermott, Rossi and Associates, on behalf of the petitioner. Are you going ahead or are you requesting a deferral? I apologize. Are you going ahead with this case or are you requesting a deferral? Oh, we're going ahead. We please please have a seat at the table. Proposed? Yes, Madam Chair. Um, the current proposal uh, at 7 Parker Street is to uh, convert what's an existing single family to a, a three family dwelling. Um, we have uh, met with members of the community um, after speaking with the community liaison and inspectional services. Uh, we do believe that members of the community after that meeting are in support. So, uh, you know, you're before us to talk about the violations. So, please tell us about the violations and how you're, what's required and what you're proposing. Certainly, Madam Chair. So as to the first uh, cited violation, Article 62, Section 25, uh, the roof structure, the proposed plans show that the uh, applicant now is not making the roof line in the proposed addition any larger than what's already existing, and that the proposed addition in the rear of the structure, uh, which can't be seen from the street, uh, will now be the same height uh, as what's existing on the current structure. Is so we believe that now deck? it's- Is there a roof deck? Uh, yes, there is, Madam Chair. Okay, and how is it accessed? It is accessed via stairwell. I apologize, Madam Chair. So it's accessed via stair. Is it a hatch or? I apologize, Madam Chair. Is it a hatch? I believe so. If I may just have a moment, I apologize. Can you hold 
pop out, please? It's a head house. It's a head house, okay. And what is the other violation? Is the dimensional requirement? Uh, yes, madam. Sure. So the other violation is as to the dimensional regulations and the usable open space. Um, the revised plans as submitted uh, when we did meet with inspectional services now include the roof deck as open space, which is shown in the plan uh, for a total square footage of uh, about 792 square feet. Uh, additionally, there is an area in the front of the property um, which is, with <coughs> is within the minimum requirement of 10 feet, uh, and that area uh, consists of open space 258 square feet. So under the code, uh, Madam Chair, uh, the revised plans as submitted uh, before the board now shows enough open space as required for three units totaling 1,050 square feet. Access to that roof deck? Is it for the entire building or just for the top unit? I believe it is common access, Madam Chair. I apologize um, if I may just have a brief moment. Okay. In the meantime, Mr. Pisani, how are the plans? The, the, the drawings are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Um, Madam Chair, members of the board, Christopher Breen from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services would like to go on record in support. The applicant completed the community process. The neighbors indicated they'd like to see the project move forward. Thank you. Is anybody here to speak? Oh, sorry, Judy, go ahead. Council wishes to be recorded in support of this proposal. Thank you. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? Uh, in the meantime, do you have a response for us on the access to the roof deck? It's a common, it's a it's common, common. risk there. It's, common. A, it's common, okay. Go ahead. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a transforming a single family into a three family. Yes, sir. Correct. What's the, uh, uh, what's the nature of the other houses on the street? Are they typically single family, three family? What are they? I believe, it, I believe the property is uh, situated uh, among similar uh, multifamily properties in that neighborhood. Generally. Well, I guess what I'm asking is, will this represent a change to the character of the neighborhood, or is it consistent with what's already been done? No, I believe that it'll be, a, it'll be consistent with the character of the neighborhood, um, and certainly not uh, and of any substantial detriment uh, to the character, quality, integrity of the neighborhood. Okay, given that information, may I have a motion? Motion to approve with DPDA design review. Second. Hold on, Mr. Pisani. Head house, no head house. Because it looks, it looks like um, the head house would in fact change the, the roof line of the uh, existing buildings on that street. Right. Would... So what we should do is attach for the BPDA design review special attention given to eliminating the head house. Okay. All those in, uh, who's, is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries with that proviso. You're all set. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, members of the board. You may call the next case calling BOA 659900, 28 Hancock Street. This is a replaced an existing roof. Are you moving forward? Yeah, you well, we, we, we'd like to. I just like. I, I, come up I, to the I don't front. Know what happened, but come I up have. to council. Come up to the front. Okay. For the record, calling it. Call, Replace the existing roof, roof deck, stairs, and roof head house. The violation of Article 15, Section 1, the floor to air ratio is excessive. Article 16, Section 8, roof structure restricted district. And Article 16, Section 1, the building height is excessive. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, if I may, just in an attempt to clarify, we, we, we actually did. We, we notice was sent on this matter. It's uh, fine. Let's go ahead. Okay, good, good. And, uh, we actually, I know we actually received. He received it the day of our mother's meeting. You, uh, the applicant 21st. owns the property, and um, he's the property owner. Yes, I'm the property okay, owner. Okay, right? so that's yeah. okay. It's his home at uh, 28 uh, Hancock okay. Street. He and his family. Uh, the application is to um, improve and replace an existing roof access roof uh, head house. Uh, stairs to that uh, and the existing roof. We had um, a long series of meetings with the Beacon Hill Civic Association, uh, went back to back months to their zoning and licensing committee, the result of which was a vote of that committee to not oppose the application. Uh, that vote was um, uh, codified, if you will, by the Beacon Hill Board of Directors at a following meeting. 
We then had an abutters meeting on site on August 21st. Uh, Ms. Guerrero from Neighborhood Services was there to uh, conduct that meeting. So, Mr. Quilty. Yes, ma'am. So, this is sounds to me like it's a little bit more than a replacement. Is it? What is what? To tell us the dimensions and what the violations are, what's required, and what's being proposed. So, the violations are FAR. Restricted roof structure district and building height excessive. Yes, uh, so what is what is the proposed FAR? We reduced it from, Alan, what are the numbers from? So it's basically the new roof space will be 106 square feet from the current 50 square feet. Okay. So it's um, 56 tell us edition. about the height, what's, what's causing that violation? Well, we, it's, it's no higher than that which exists, yeah. so we don't think that the, the violation was actually correct and, to begin and, with. And what, what is it now? It's, it's exactly the same height so as it was. What's the, the total? Correct. And what is it? Uh, it's, um, I don't know if I have the exact height over here, but uh, basically has kind of like a seven feet ceiling inside, so it will be like eight and a half feet outside. Oh, about eight. Which matched the existing uh, area that was replaced. And it's no higher than the uh, adjacent wall, existing bearing wall. It's a large wall to its uh, south, yeah. that, cup that hides the entire structure. This was done in, in large part to, due to a fire in the property where they escaped serious injury um, and were requested by the fire department to create a better access to the area because it provides the only means out of the building from that level, or one of the most direct means out of the building at that level. Um, again, we, we had a, a number of meetings. He went <clears throat> door to door with every one of his abutters. Every one of them was in support of oh, the application. Mr. Bucky, how are the plans, Mr. Bazzani? The drawings are adequate, but I do have one question. There are two roof decks, left and right, mm -hmm. or east and west, whatever. Uh, is access to this deck, these decks, Restricted to the unit below, or is it common access for everybody? Only for my unit. Only his unit. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, John Allison, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, on behalf of Giselle Guerrero, uh, we'd like to go on record in support. Thank you. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? May I have a motion, please? Motion to grant the relief requested. Second. Uh, this is back. Back to Beacon Hill Architectural. Okay. Yes, sir. There's a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. You're all set. Thank, Thank you. you. Sorry for the confusion. Calling next case calling BOA 739065, 53 to 55 Bromfield Street. This is the removal proviso, the previous petitioner of Pedro's Tacos to become the barracuda on the fly. No work to be performed. The violation of Article 6, Section 4, applicant seeks to remove proviso from the previous petitioner, Pedro's Tacos. Name and address for the re record, please. Uh, 5355 Bronfield Street. Lucas Stepanov and Beth Stepanov. Beth Stepanov. Okay, tell us what you're proposing. So we're just trying to uh, change the names on, uh, we bought a building last year, uh, Pedro's Tacos was a franchise, they wanted to get out of the franchise, so they left and uh, we own a Barracuda Tavern which is on the second floor, uh, so we're just trying to expand their business and do a little takeout shop on the other side. And do you have experience with takeout? Uh, we have plenty of experience in the, in the restaurant industry as well as... Uh, but, but with takeout? Yeah. We yeah. do as well. We have many people do takeout now at Barracuda Tavern. We also had a food truck that we started, so we were doing events. We had an engine fire, unfortunately, with our mechanic. Thank we you. lost the truck, so. How are the plans, Mr. Pisani? Drawings are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is the only change on the exterior of the signage? Uh, the signage, and uh, we just cleaned up uh, deep cleaning. That's, that's all was, was done. Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, John Allison, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, on behalf of Denny Ching, we'd like to go on record in support. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? Um, have you guys seen the BRA's um, draft recommendations? May I have a motion, please? 
So this um, this re recommends uh, the full takeout language, uh, with uh, plans being submitted to the BRA for design review. They have a motion. Motion for approval. Second. Oh, with usual takeout language. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries with the takeout yeah. provisos. Thank you very much. You. Calling BOA 673894, 244 New Newbury Street. This is a remove proviso for takeout and apply for a new applicant. Violation of Article 6, Section 4, change the proviso to takeout granted for this petitioner use only. Name and address of the record, Madam please. Madam Chair, Board Members, Kenneth J. Leitner, 75 North Beacon Street, Watertown, on behalf of the petitioner, Dennis Dyer. Um, Mr. Dyer is the owner of the building. He has uh, ample experience as a restaurateur, having a two restaurants in Gloucester, one in Watertown, one, one in Belmont, and actually three restaurants in Gloucester. He, took, he purchased the building. The tenant, Witchett, could no longer satisfy the lease, so he took over the operation and only has... Which location is what was the former, what was the former tenant? Witchett. It's the oh, same yes, name. Yeah. Or okay. It has 17 seats. It needs to take off business to uh, be viable there, so he took it over. And we're looking for a change in the proviso for this. Okay. Well, may I add that the, the check, it should actually read Dyer's uh, Sandwich Shop Corp. Is the whole and, and what's the, the name of the business? Put it up Witch it, DBA Witchet. Okay. Yeah. How are the plans, Mr. Uh, Zani? We actually do not have any drawings. Uh, mm -hmm. so we, uh, do you have any on you? I do not, but it's, nothing has changed at all. When I filed it, they didn't ask for any plans. It's exactly the same as it's been. Um, well, um, what we could do is proceed and hold signature until they submit a plan. Okay. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, John Ellis and Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services on behalf of Giselle Guerrero, would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? May I have a motion, please? I'd like to make a motion to grant the relief requested with the proviso that we uh, hold signature until plans are submitted. And with the take usual takeout language? That's usual takeout language. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries with those provisos. Please get us those plans as soon as possible. I, I will. Thank you. Calling the next case, calling BOA 744-3947 Bell Court. There's also building code BOA 744-3957 Bell Court. This is to change actually from a two to three family dwelling, a full renovation, construct a new side addition with two parking within garage and roof deck, and extend living space to the basement for unit one. The violation of Article 68, Section 29, the roof structure restrictions. Article 68, Section 33, off street parking is insufficient. Article 68, Section 8, floor to air ratio is excessive. Article 68, Section 8, lot frontage is insufficient. Article 68, front yard is insufficient. Article 68, Section 8, side yard is insufficient. And Article 68, Section 8, rear yard is insufficient. This is for building code. 780 CMR 120G, flood, flood resistant construction, enclosed spaces below the base, flood elevation shall not be used for human occupancy. And 780-1021, a number of exits and continuity, occupied roofs shall be provided with exits as required for stories. A common roof deck is, a requi is required to have two means of egress. Name and address for the record, please. Patrick Mahoney of Adams and Marancy with a business address of 350 West Broadway. Being proposed, please. Certainly, Madam Chair, there's an existing two family building, um, and it, it'll be in a, to the right of it, is a, there's a swimming pool, and that'll be de demolished, and the building will be. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I was just reminded, as is our usual process, can you speak to the building code, please? Certainly. The building code violations, as cited, um, can be withdrawn at this time. The the flood is regarding the flood zone and living space in the first area. It's, it's a zone X, I believe, according to the FEMA map, in which case uh, this it wouldn't be a building code violation. That's, that would only be for a, an AE area. Uh, regarding the, the roof. So that, that, that was part of it. The other yeah, one was the roof structure. So the, yeah. the roof deck has been removed 
and also with it the need for relief for the second means of egress from a common roof, roof deck. Motion to deny building code relief. Second. Why? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, now tell us about the, the appeal. And, and similarly, one of the violations was Article 68-29, restricted roof structure. We'll also um, not be seeking relief for that as there's no roof deck uh, being proposed on the on the new or existing structure. So it is an existing two-family building and a uh, proposed addition to the right side of it as you're seeing it on the cover of the plans. With the proposed unit, there's two parking spaces. 1.5 is required under Article 68 uh, because it's in odd number it will be rounded up to two and two two spaces are provided clarification this is to convert from a two to a three yes okay okay thank you yep and this is seven bell court five dash seven bell court is the address okay. yep so council there there is no stair or roof hatch going to the roof right correct it's now a gable roof that's correct. There's okay. no there were no roof deck whatsoever. No, no flat. Yep. Okay. And, and that was the, that was the main issue that came up throughout the community process was concerns with the roof deck and noise and, and, and things that go along with that. Um, the first floor unit is a bi-level unit, and, and which was also the cause of the incorrectly cited building code violation. The it, it'll be a one bedroom unit, 812 square feet, with a living area on the lower level bedroom will be on the first level and then uh, for unit two and three and then to the right of that on the same level is the parking above the parking and on the second level each unit two will just span that second floor and unit three will also span the third floor um, unit two is a two bed two bath as well as unit three 787 square feet for unit two and 800 square feet for unit three there isn't a there is a rear deck and means of second means of egress, although not required with three stories, because the building will be sprinkled. Um, but open space is not met because 200 square feet per unit is required, and, and we're insufficient of that. Has this address been before this board in the past? As a deferral, I believe, under H150, and it was a, a proposal for it a new building to to demolish the existing building and then to erect a new structure and it was done under H-150. They, for reasons uh, the developer thought pertinent, he, he decided to leave the existing building and expand it. Okay. How are the plans, Mr. Pisani? The drawings are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is there a reason you chose to do a head house as opposed to a hatch or access to the eliminated the roof deck. It, it, none whatsoever. Oh, on, on yeah, there's, there's okay. a reason that we eliminated it, and that, sure. that would be, that'd be it. Any other questions from the board? Is yeah, it just a question for the DTDA about the I don't want to answer that question. Well, that's just an old. old. I know what you're saying. Yep. <laughs> okay. And is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Is anybody here in opposition? Madam Chair, members of the board, John Allison, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, we can't go on record in support of this proposal due to it being within Article 68. Um, I would like to note for the record we did hold a community meeting and there was support for the project without the roof deck. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Lauren Miller, City Council, Bill Linehan's office. Just to echo the Mayor's Office's statement, um, we cannot go on record in support. However, the abutters meeting was well attended. People are happy to see this project as long as there's no roof deck. Thank you. Is this is this under the new South Boston iPod, Matt? The, no, the appeal no. was file, uh, filed, filed previous prior to, the, prior to okay. June okay. 21st. Okay, um, given that information, may I have a motion, please? A motion to approve with uh, continued BPDA design review. And no roof deck. And no roof deck. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries, you're all set. Thank you.
Calling the next case, calling BOA 719 810 874 East 6th Street. Madam Chair, members of the board, I recuse myself from this case. This is to construct a new three story residential building comprising of six units and underground parking for nine vehicles. The violations Article 29, Section 4. This is in the Greenbelt Protection Overlay District. Article 68, Section 34, conformity with the existing building alignment of the block. Article 68, Section 29, Roof Structure Restricted District. Article 68, Section 8, the height requirements is excessive. And Article 68, Section 8, the required side yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is George Morancy. I'm an attorney with the business address of 350 West Broadway in South Boston. I'm joined by my client, uh, the owner and developer of the project, David Winnick. Uh, Madam Chair, members, the uh, plans that uh, are before the board today are somewhat revised from the, uh, the original application plans. Uh, the cited violations have uh, all been eliminated, uh, the, uh, the zoning violations. What's before the board today is simply a matter of GPOD approval. Um, on the originally cited violations, there was a cited side yard setback, which was the result of a transcription error on the uh, site plan by the surveyor. Uh, the uh, front yard uh, violation uh, was, in fact, an error. Uh, this is a modal alignment that uh, conforms with uh, code setback requirements for front yard, uh, and uh, et cetera. The, uh, 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 the violations, again, have all been eliminated, either by fact that they were an error or um, a minor violation that was corrected. So, uh, the, um, so there is no roof deck? Correct. Uh, and it, what's the height of the building? Uh, the building is uh, 38 and a half, I believe, uh, as indicated on the plan sheets. Uh, I believe that we're looking at uh, sheet, uh, sorry, looking at sheet A4.1. The, uh, so what, what all that is before the board today is green belt protection overlay district. Um, we are not seeking any zoning relief, and to the extent that zoning uh, relief or zoning violations were read into the record, I, I, I want to go on the record officially stating that we are not seeking and we do not need any variances. All we're seeking today is site plan approval pursuant to Article 29 green belt protection overlay district. So the building is completely zoning compliant. Uh, it's a uh, uh, six unit building uh, in, um, uh, at 874 East 6th Street. It's, re it's replacing an existing building that's there. Uh, the, um, the building would uh, have uh, uh, adequate off street parking for um, 12 vehicles, I'm sorry, for 10 vehicles uh, accessed by an existing curb cut on 6th Street. Uh, with respect to really the only thing that we're here uh, before this board regarding, which is uh, Article 29, Section 6, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the burden is on the plaint on the, uh, on the appellant to show that provision has been made uh, for adequate, adequate vehicular access, off-street parking and loading, which should not have a significant adverse effect on traffic and parking on the Greenbelt Roadway and adjacent streets. Uh, again, uh, the parking is zoning compliant and it's achieved by an existing curb cut. Uh, the second criterion is that provision of landscaping treatment ensures the natural and aesthetic quality of the Greenbelt area will be maintained. Uh, again, this is zoning compliant. We exceed the amount of usable open space required uh, uh, by the code by 12 and a half percent. How do you explain that? Because I was actually just looking at the plans trying to figure that out. How does that work? How does the open space work? Is that the, that the front yard? Um, yes, the, 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 uh, the, open, the open space is accomplished by the, uh, both the balconies and uh, in the, in the, uh, the, uh, the landscaped uh, and including the hard paved areas uh, around the building. Okay, and tell us how the parking is going to work. I'm looking at A1.1. So there's an existing curb cut which is at the bottom uh, right hand side of the uh, parking diagram on that page. Uh, so the parking, uh, uh, the driveway runs up the right side, and then uh, the parking spaces uh, are aligned on the uh, the left side of the garage. How, what, how does the access to the garage work? That's the part I don't understand. 
Yeah, there's a there's a garage door in the back uh, on your plan. It says it's indicating that there's a trench drain there mm -hmm. for site drainage. That's the location of the of the garage door. Okay. Okay. And the garage door uh, should be visible. Actually, it's not. It doesn't seem to be visible on the uh, on the elevations. Okay. Yeah, but it, it's in the back after you loop around on the right hand side. If you look at the uh, the second elevation page in, in color, uh, you can see how the driveway slopes down, uh, and then the access uh, is provided in the the lower level in the rear via that garage door. Uh, and I'm sorry. The third criteria. I just want to get it on the record is that. Uh, provision for the design of all structures which is compatible with the surrounding neighborhood. Again, uh, presumptions uh, 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 through through uh, court cases is that once uh, a matter is in fact zoning compliant, the presumption is that the building is compatible with the surrounding neighborhood. That compatibility standard is not an aesthetic standard. Uh, it is a, a, a massing and density standard under the GPOD uh, scheme, uh, and that's been consistently held by the courts to be the case. Mr. Alec. The drawings are very good. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Is anybody here in opposition? Madam Chair, members of the board, John Allison, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We'd like to go on record in strong opposition. Uh, this project has been met with a lot of opposition in the community for many reasons, both the height and density being out of scale with the surrounding neighborhood, which though it may be technically zoning compliant, I think may be something that needs to be looked at through the iPod process, um, as well as the negative impacts on the Greenbelt Roadway by adding an additional possibly five or six vehicles to the site. Um, there are also numerous concerns around the design and um, just the scale of the building in relation to its surroundings. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Lauren Miller, City Council, Bill Linehan's office. Um, we too wish to go on record in opposition. Um, the, the neighborhood is completely against this project, so we're going to stand with them. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, on behalf of City Council at large, Michael Flaherty. The council stands with the neighbors, the entire neighborhood in opposition to this project. Um, the proponent has failed to work with the neighborhood on this project, and this is a project that may benefit for a deferral, but at this particular point, the councilor. Um, is in opposition, standing with the neighborhood. Madam Chairwoman, members of the board, Nick Safarakis from Congressman Stephen Lynch's office. The Congressman would like to be recorded in opposition to this. We've been to several meetings. There's over 300 signatures from the neighborhood opposed to the design and the size of the building. It just does not fit into the fabric of the neighborhood. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Adam Barnowski, 255 State Street. I'm a counsel for the Mary Sylvester Trust, which is the abutting property to the rear on 5th Street. Uh, the family has owned the property there What's for 60 the years. What's the address of that property? I'm sorry. 8, 853. And uh, we'd like to go on, uh, on the record in opposition of the proposal. The, the plans that the trust had seen uh, did require zoning relief. Uh, we were given copies of these new plans uh, just last night. We haven't had the opportunity to review. Uh, and to provide feedback and strongly are uh, against this proposal as it currently stands. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, John Maddox, I'm the abutter of 855 East Street on the opposite side of this project. I have um, over 200 signatures here that I'd like to submit and put in record. And I also have um, a written statement from my lawyer um, opposed to it for the record, please. Yes, and will will the rest of the people who are here in opposition who have not had a chance to speak, please raise your hands. Thank you. So just for the record, we'll acknowledge this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 people here also in opposition. Okay, given that information, um, Mr. Moranzi? Yes, uh, to address a couple of the matters, I need to reiterate again for the board, we're not here seeking zoning relief. This is a zoning compliant project. And, and that's reflected in the plans that is reflected we have in this the morning. Plans, and I, have, uh, I don't have it printed out, but I have an updated refusal letter that was reissued by the Special Services Department today, 
citing GPOT only, so we are not seeking any zoning relief whatsoever. Uh, in terms of, uh, there was a mention made of the iPod, we are not subject to the iPod. This uh, appeal was filed uh, before the iPod was advertised. Uh, there was a reference to uh, uh, vehicular impacts to the Greenbelt Roadway. Uh, we meet the zoning code requirements. By that logic, any project located within a GPOD uh, that meets off-street parking requirements would have a negative impact on the Greenbelt Roadway. So you couldn't have a project that complied with off-street parking requirements in that interpretation of, uh, of GPOD vehicular impacts. The fact of the matter is uh, this is simply a six-unit project with 10 cars, an existing curb cut. It's not even located on the Greenbelt Roadway, which is, in fact, Gay Boulevard. We're located on East 6th Street. Right. I'm just a little puzzled. If you're not seeking zoning relief, then why don't we simply make a motion to deny well, it has to be approved for GPOD, uh, Mr. Ehrlich. And, and GPOD is GPOD is 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 compliance with site plan requirements. Yeah. Right. But it seems that we should so we, not seek zoning relief. Then we should have court. So now we just need to vote essentially on the GPOD. Yeah. Okay. So. Well, I cannot make consent that we actually affirmatively vote to deny zoning uh, relief. Yeah. So just that does not become to an dot issue. the eyes across the table. I, okay. I would make a motion to deny the zoning relief. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Now let's get to the the G G pod. And G pod. Just a reminder to the board: uh, this board, I believe, has denied um, a G pod approval twice, to my recollection, in its history. Both times it was overturned by, uh, in one case, the Massachusetts Appeals Court. In the case of KCI Management, one case it was my case, Mulligan versus uh, Board of Appeal. Uh, uh, just a reminder that. Uh, the, K uh, the KCI case, the appeals court has held that where the proposed use is one permitted by right, uh, and this is direct quote from the court, the board may impose reasonable terms and conditions on the proposed use, but it does not have discretionary power to deny the use. Uh, again, just uh, just a reminder on the standards under GPOD because it is not zoning relief. Okay, thank you. May I have a motion, please? I'm going to make a motion to uh, oppose. Is there a second to the denial? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries with the denial. Straight denial. Calling the next case. Calling the next case, calling BOA 732 467 1 Linden Street. This is to add two residential parking spaces to the rear of the property, which is situated on a corner lot. Parking spaces will be 19 and a half feet deep. The violations, Article 10, Section 1, limitation of off-street parking areas. Article 68, Section 33, off-street parking design, eight and a half by 20 feet per regulation. And Article 68, Section 8, usable open space is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Sorry, uh, Patrick Mahoney of Adams and Marancy with a business address of 350 West Broadway. Let's be please. I'm sure the proposal is it's an existing single family building on a corner lot with no parking and uh, there's a proposed curb cut to allow for two parking spaces. Is there parking on that side of the street? There is. There is. Okay. Yep. So it's a corner lot. How far is the uh, proposed curb cut from the corner? It's uh, it's it's in the furthest most point of the rear lot, so it, it's approximately 57 feet it is the location. The, this, the two violations cited were for parking size, the, for, for required parking in, in this section of the neighborhood section, Article 68. It's 50% uh, of the spaces have to be eight and a half feet by 20 feet, but that's for required parking where it's an existing single family building, it's not required parking, and, th and therefore I would say not re required to meet these parking dimensions. Well, but they've been cited, so let's go for it. They have, sure. So it additionally, uh, with parking, there would be a reduction in open space, but we still have the required 200 square feet of open space between a, a small front yard and a rear yard and a, a space surrounding the three season porch. The spaces here are 19 and a half feet by nine feet. So, they're, they're, so they're what's required? Eight and a half by 20 is required. Right. Eight and a half by so, 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 so it's, it's one foot, one foot shot, short. Uh, six inches. So I was seeking a six inch variance. Okay. How are the plans, Mr. Bazzani? 
Drawings are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Letters in support. Madam Chair, members of the board, John Allison, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, we would like to go on record in support of this Thank project. You. We did hold an on-site abutters meeting. I do just want to acknowledge there were some concerns raised around the uh, length of the curb cut, um, as well as uh, possibly damaging pipes that are buried under the yards. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Lauren Miller, City Council of Bill Linehan's office, we too wish to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? May I have a motion, please? Motion for approval. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Madam Chair, before I call the 1030s, I'm going to go back to the call of the chair. Metropolitan, 726 Metropolitan Ave. Are you here? Calling BOA 664 869 726 Metropolitan Ave. Name and address for the record, please. I'm Nata Boda, 726 Metropolitan Ave. Tell us, tell us what you're proposing. Um, revise the plan to dig to oh. get. I'm sorry, can you speak up, please? I'm sorry. So the plan is revised so that I'm going to dig to get the additional Does ceiling height. Do you have height. a copy of the plans? I, I, I took it to um, 1010 Mass Ave. Um, I thought. What was, what was the date of, you know, the date of the revised plans? No, I'm. Well, we have a small set, Madam Chair, of plans that. Uh, I took it there about two or three weeks ago. That look as if they have, they do have more information, so I will accept these as the revised plans. And it shows floor to ceiling height of what? Uh, floor to ceiling height of. Basement of 7.4. That's the existing. Mr. Bazan, I do have documents here dated 318.17. Would you like to look at them? Uh, could you send those down, please? Uh, 318.17. So that would have been before the revised plans. Okay, so that's all I have in here. So, so what is the proposed flow to ceiling height that, that you will dig to? Um, seven feet six oh. inches. Seven foot six inches, okay. Uh, so you will meet it, propose to meet it. And this was a change of use from a three to a four family. Correct. Okay. Um, did we have other concerns about the change of occupancy? No. Um, I was told to just bring in a set of revised plans to show how I'm going to get to the seven feet, six inches okay. um, floor to ceiling height. Mr. So Pisani, are you satisfied? Yes. Okay, may I have a motion, please? A motion to grant a leave request. Do we want design review? With uh, PPDL design review. Second. All, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. You're all set. One question, so does that mean now I can apply for a permit? How long do I have to wait? Why don't you take the question offline? Uh, because we have other cases that come after you. Okay. Of the 1030 cases, are there any deferrals or withdrawals for 1030? This is it deferrals or withdrawals only? Hearing none, I'm gonna call the first case. Hold on, hold on, Mr. Fortune, for a minute. Just a reminder to everybody, because I know there's been a, a change of the number of people and who's in the room. Just a reminder, please have your cell phones off. And if you have um, any conversations, please take them outside of the room. Uh, we are here on a fact-finding mission, so to speak. So if you're here to talk either in support or in opposition to the project, Please be succinct and tell us exactly what your concern is. If somebody else has already stated what your concern is, please just put your name and address on the record. In conformance with the open meeting law, this meeting is being live streamed. Go ahead, Mr. Fortune. Thank you, Madam Chair. Calling the first case for 1037, calling BOA 708 498, 1575 Tremont Street. This is to subdivide an existing lot at 1575 Tremont Street containing 88,454 square feet into two lots, 
1575 Tremont Street with a lot of 50,720 square feet and the remaining area to become 95 St. Alphonse Street, Lot 2, with a lot area of 37,734 square feet. <coughs> the violations Article 9, Section 2, Non-Conforming Use Change, and Article 59, Section 37, off-street parking is insufficient, insuff insufficient parking for an existing 147 units. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is James Green. I'm an attorney with the firm of Rubin and Rudman. I'm here on behalf of Bluestone, uh, 1575 Tremont Street Realty Trust. And with me is Ralph Cole, a, a member of the Bluestone project team. This uh, application was filed in connection with a uh, project at 95 St. Alphonse Street, which is to be the new lot after the subdivision. In accordance with ISD requirements, we are required to file a subdivision plan, and because the existing lot, which is about 88,000 square feet at the corner of Tremont Street and St. Alphonse Street and Mission Hill, across the street from Mission Church, uh, has presently a 14-story, 147-unit apartment building, which is owned by my client, so I'm and sorry, it's again 14 story, how many units? Uh, 147 units in the existing building. Okay. And it, be, behind that building is a 175 space parking garage. These were all built in 1964, I believe, under the old Whitney Street Urban Renewal Project Plan by the BRA at the time, approved by the BRA at the time. It's privately owned. My client intends to subdivide the lot to make both lots available for HUD financing and to develop on the real lot a zoning compliant 115 unit residential rental apartment building with uh, the affordable housing units, 15 affordable housing units. Uh, on site. On site. And this project to be constructed to the rear of the existing building is now undergoing BRA Article 80 review. So is this a request for a deferral then? No, it's a request for a subdivision at the time that we need to, to show HUD that we have subdivision approval of these two lots. But will you be coming, so is, I'm, I'm sorry, I might have missed this, but will the 115 units need to come before this board? No, they will not. As of, it, right, as of right, it complies with the Mission Hill zoning at 75 feet, a density factor of three, uh, side yard, setback, open space, all of the requirements. This and project has been designed to be zoning compliant. And the, the 147 <coughs> units, uh, was this 175 uh, parking garage built to meet the requirements? of the 147 units? That's correct. And therefore, the citation that ISD cited was a change in the resulting in non-conforming use because we're subdividing the garage technically from the tower, the 147 units. However, as set forth in the appeal and as set forth in the BRA documentation under Article 80, there will be an easement agreement between the two lots which will provide parking in the new below grade one level garage plus a above level in the new building for both 147 Commonwealth uh, Tremont Street, uh, excuse me, 1575 Tremont Street, the 147 units, as well as the 115 units at 95 St. Alphonse Street. So that's, that's been part of the BPDA review and the IAG review about shared facilities for both buildings. Uh, I just have a small handout if you'd like to look at this. This is basically the, the design and the, the landscaping one, one, sorry. for the new building. But what it does is it incorporates uh, shared access, shared loading dock below grade, shared bicycle facility, uh, so trash. Why, I'm sorry, why didn't this come to us then as um, both a subdivision and a request for ancillary parking to the, so that in fact we were uh, uh, assured through the appeal process that both, both uh, buildings were being uh, acknowledged. So I would say that, that as I said in the appeal, 
a condition of the board would be that the subdivision doesn't take, doesn't take effect until this project is approved and underway. Okay? We are not going to subdivide the lot until we get this project completely approved by the BPDA, and that may be this week or next month under Article 80, and do the HUD closing, which should take place in October of November of this year. And so therefore, that type of condition is completely acceptable to the owner, that the subdivision doesn't take effect until... I mean, I, I go back to my question, is that this... I, I suppose we could put that in as a proviso, that it provide the ancillary parking, so the ancillary parking is being taken care of. Mm -hmm. How are the plans, Mr. Bazzani? The drawings are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, John Allison, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, on behalf of Giselle Guerrero, uh, we'd like to go on record in strong support. There have been numerous community meetings about this project, and people are in support of the subdivision. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Minor Perez, representing the Carpenters Union. We'd like to go on record in support of this project. Thank you. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? May I have a motion, please? I'd like to make a motion to grant the subdivision request uh, and with a proviso noting that the subdivision doesn't actually take place until the approval and start of the construction. And, second. and the There's second piece is that it will um, accommodate ancillary parking um, that, that will be eliminated essentially with the subdivision. And then it will accommodate ancillary, ancillary parking that will be eliminated. Thank you. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries with those provisions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Calling the next case, calling VOA 698 eleven Wise Street. This is to raise the existing single family home and construct a new three unit townhouse style residence. This is the combined parcels at 7 Y Street, 1,514 square feet, and 9 Y Street of 1,240 square feet, and 11 Y Street at 1,340 square feet, which equals 4,094 4 square feet. The violations Article 10, Section 1, design insuffi insufficient yard, accessory parking, buffer is 5 feet, side yard required. Article 55, Section 9, insufficient lot size, 7,000 square feet is required. Article 55, Section 9, insufficient open space, 1,750 square feet is required. Article 55, Section 9, excessive FAR, 2,456 square feet maximum allowed. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Richard Lins, 1216 Bennington Street. On behalf of the petitioner, S7 Realty Trust, with me to my right is James Christopher, RCA uh, Architects, the architect for the project, as well as uh, Chris Tomatos, who is the uh, principal of the uh, petitioner. This is a proposal to uh, raise an existing single family property, uh, combine three lots, and construct three uh, townhouse units with parking, uh, one for each unit. Uh, we had an opportunity to present this to the uh, neighborhood through both an abutters meeting as well as the Jamaica Plain uh, Neighborhood Zoning Subcommittee, uh, which voted to support this proposal. Uh, the proposal would call for a total of three units, all having three bedrooms, uh, roughly about 1,700 square feet per unit, and as I indicated, one parking space. Uh, with respect to the zoning relief that's necessary, this isn't a 3F 5,000 district. Uh, one and two family requires a minimum of 3,000 square feet, which this lot would contain. However, we do need to require a variance for the additional unit that we're proposing, uh, which is the third unit, requiring a total 2,000 square feet. Uh, in addition, uh, the so that, would bring, that would bring it up to about 5,000 square feet, and you're at 4,094 square feet. That's correct. Okay. Uh, with respect to the floor area ratio, the limit is a uh, 0.6 max. We're proposing 1.4, request a variance for that. Uh, as well as the rear yard, the limit is 20 feet minimum. Uh, it's a 7.5 is the proposed uh, to the uh, closest point of the building. I would point out these are relatively shallow lots. Uh, and this is an issue that we specifically discussed uh, with the direct abutters uh, to which there was no objection. Uh, the open space requirement is 750 square feet per unit. We're proposing a total of 850 square feet 
total and then with respect to design of the parking spaces, one of the parking spaces that we're proposing uh, is located on the left side yard and therefore would require relief. I think there's the possibility of moving that space back a little bit further to get it out of the plane of the front, front yard, uh, but that, those are the items that we're requesting relief for. Okay. How are the plans, Mr. Pisani? The drawings are adequate. And there are three roof deck, roof decks proposed? That's and they're accessed by? By comments, uh, well, by individual steps. Individual steps from each individual unit with a head house from each unit. With a head house from each unit? Correct. Okay. Any questions from the board? This is currently a vacant lot, right? It's a single family home and then two vacant lots. We're combining the three lots. Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, Alexandra Valdez, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, I would like to go on record as support and state that they got full support from the Jamaica Plain Zoning Committee and they had a well attended at Butters meeting. Madam Chair, members of the board, Shannon Murphy from City Councilor Matt O'Malley's office, the council would like to go on record in support of this project. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, on behalf of City Council at Large, Michael Flaherty, council would go on record in support. Madam Chair, members of the board, Jessica Rodriguez, City Councilor at Large, Denise Sivey George's office, and she would also like to go on record in support. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? Is there a reason you chose to use uh, Head House versus Hatch for access? Maintenance, they last longer. It's easy to work with, uh, Mr. Ehrlich. How does that change, how does it uh, meld in with the rest of the neighborhood having the head house versus the hatch? The head house is a set to the back of the property, Madam Chair, and the in, um, that they wouldn't be visible from the street. So from the rear, you might be able to see the edge of it going up, but the, the overall height is only uh, eight feet. So from the front of the property, it'd be virtually invisible. And from the rear, if you were on the, in one of the neighboring abutters, you would just see an eight foot extension for that small section of the head house. Okay, okay uh, given that information, may I have a motion, please? Motion for approval with BPDA design. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries with that proviso. Thank you very much. Thank you. Calling BOA 692-756, Dolan's Court. This is parking for one residential vehicle in the front yard space. The violation of Article 9, Section 1, extension of a non-conforming use, and Article 55, are they here? No, let's hold on. Okay. Calling the next case, BOA 736-480-55 Hutchings Street. This is direct a new multifamily residential four unit dwelling with four off street parking and existing 8,546 square foot vacant lot. The violation of Article 50, Section 28, a multifamily dwelling is forbidden use. Article 50, Section 29, additional lot area is insufficient. Article 50, Section 29, the floor to air ratio is excessive. Article 50, Section 29, the building height is excessive. Article 50, Section 29, usable open space is insufficient. Article 50, Section 29, side yard is insufficient, and Article 50, Section 44.2, conformity of an existing building alignment. Name and address for the record, please. Attorney Daniel McDevitt, 2 Granite Avenue in Milton, and with me is Solomon Chowdhury, who is the uh, petitioner. Councilor, can you please start off by describing the project and then going straight into what the violations are, what's required, and what, what is being proposed in this in this scheme? Yes. So. The site is about 8,900 square feet. We're proposing to construct a uh, four-unit building for home ownership opportunity. Uh, these are townhouse units uh, within the building. Uh, the building is, is next door to a building that my client also owns that was a concern of the neighborhood that was dilapidated over a long period of time and is now being brought back to life. Uh, we had extensive uh, meetings with the with the local civic association and the abutters. directly to the violations, so, please? As a result of the meetings that we had, we, we changed the design of the building, which is before you today. We brought the roof height down, even though it was only one foot higher at 36 feet. We brought it down to about 28 feet. 
Um, and even though uh, parking is not a violation, we added a turnaround area in the backyard so that the vehicles could back around and uh, not have to back down the driveway and not be in each other's way. That came up as a result of discussions with the abutters and the neighbors. There also is an area there sufficient for the pushing of snow, which I think is very important. Okay, so this is a 3F 7,000 square foot lot. That's correct. And in, it's a three family zone. You're pro proposing a four family. We are. Okay, tell us about the FAR, the usable open space, the side yards. Well, on the side yard, we also shrunk the building uh, to make the building a little bit narrower so that we don't have that violation. So that we do not need relief for the height of the side yard. Uh, the, it's, it's an interesting neighborhood in that many of these houses have uh, large apartment buildings, and some of them are four families or whatever, but directly behind this building is a 37-unit building on 20,000 square feet, which is a subsidized housing building. And the concern of the neighbors was this vacant lot had created a passageway to that building, uh, and they wanted to see it built upon. Uh, larger each one of these units? They're about 1,700 square feet. Okay. And uh, they're two bedrooms with a study. Uh, they're they're walk-up townhouse style buildings. That it would be home ownership. Uh, and um, it's uh, with regard to the uh, conformity of the building alignment, which is, uh, which is also a violation. You can see on the drawings that this building was lined up with the building next door which is a pre-existing condition, and I think we're very much close to 20 feet from the sidewalk, but lining it up straight with the building next door made an awful lot of sense as far as the, the look of the building on the approach from the street. Okay, and there would be um, four, four parking spaces in the rear? Yes, four parking spaces in the rear and a place to turn a car around or back into, which could also be used for someone who was delivering something or making a quick visit or uh, getting into an Uber or something like that. There's a spot there. Um, and because we, uh, this, this, even though the driveway is 10 feet wide and there's good line of sight, it's never a good idea to be backing out of any driveway if you can avoid it. So this gives ample turnaround space. How are the plans, Mr. Bazzani? The drawings are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, John Allison, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, on behalf of Josh McFadden, we'd like to go on record in support. It's our understanding the proponent presented to the Neighborhood Association and has support from many direct abutters, as well as a petition from some abutters. Thank you. I am Marilyn Chase. I'm an abutter at 47 Hutching Street. I'd like to speak in support. Uh, we also submitted a letter in support uh, signed by many of the homeowners and residents on this street. I have an additional letter from my husband and I. Um, there's one point that I'd like to make. Uh, for many of the residents on our street, parking is a problem. Uh, it's been a, uh, an increasing problem for the last several years. I think it's a direct result of the improving economy and the fact that everybody seems to be buying a car. Uh, the last occupant of 5155 Hutching Street had one car, which he parked off street, and we still had a parking problem. So we appreciate the fact that the owners of this property have agreed to put four parking units on their site. However, we understand and recognize that that's not going to fix the parking problem on our street. Thank you. Thank you. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? Madam Chair, members of the board, Claudia Philibert, 70 Hutching Street. I'm in opposition, and it's mainly because of the parking problem. Uh, good morning. My name is Bridget Wallace. I live at 43 Hutching Street. And as previous residents had said, um, the 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 desire to build uh, is ambitious, but I'm concerned about parking uh, because we have an enormous parking problem with cars going through that area. Um, and if you have visitors, if you have uh, delivery, if you have a whole host of things that will disrupt, again, the quality of life on the street, uh, um, I think that 
needs to be taken up as an issue um, that's concerning the, the residents. It also didn't go through the um, Garrison Trotter Neighborhood Association, which is sort of the governing body of uh, what's happening uh, in the neighborhood and as the neighborhood is growing and developing. So we're a bit concerned about it truncating that process or usurping that process, I should say. And also um, green space, um, and they did address the hike uh, issues that we had concerning uh, the project. So um, it's mainly parking um, and going through a process uh, that we want to maintain, which is going through the Garrison uh, Neighborhood Charter Association. Thank you. Good morning, board. My name is Carol Merrill, and I'm at 35 Hutching Street. I, as well, stand in opposition of this project. I am for um, development, but there are some significant impacts that we need to consider, such as assessing property taxes and abutting um, homes. There are a lot of people that live on a street that are seniors, and there's going to be a direct impact to that. So I'd like to understand what the city is prepared to do in terms of how do you balance things out. So I also support the opposition of the person before me in terms of traffic. It's a very dense uh, area. So whether you have a garage space that's on the property doesn't make a difference because cars have to move. And what I mean by that is you got to come out of your driveway. And there's a lot of people that are flying down that street. It presents a hazard to children and to the elders. So I'd like some kind of um, attention put towards that density, the traffic, and the problem that people are currently living with, and not to mention the trash. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so was parking one of your violations? No, it is not, Madam Chair. Parking isn't a violation. We meet the uh, requirements of the parking. Uh, certainly, and with regard to the, the uh, opposition that spoke about Garrison Trotter. When we file, we're told by the mayor's office where to go, and we went where we were told to go, which is the Hutchings has their own association, and they conducted three meetings, and they sent in a letter of support, and the people that run that association feel very comfortable about controlling the destiny of their own neighborhood, or they, or they would have sent us on to Garrison Trotter. Um, so okay, we did meet with them. Right there. And you have a letter of support from them. Okay, hold on right there. May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries with that proviso. Calling BOA 717-278, 46 to 48 Maywood Street. This is new construction of a two-family structure. The violations, Article 50, Section 43, off-street parking is insufficient. Article 50, Section 29, lot width is insufficient. And Article 50, Section 29, lot frontage is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Jim Grabato, 16 Russellwood Road, West Roxbury. This is a uh, two family that we're doing with the Department of Neighborhood Development uh, for ho affordable home ownership. Uh, the lot is uh, uh, six feet. The frontage is a 45 foot requirement. We have 39 feet in this particular parcel. And uh, the reason of the parking is the site is, uh, has a lot of ledge uh, and the expense to be able to uh, bring the parking down behind the houses. How many parking spaces? I we'll have one close. parking space. One parking one space parking. for the two units? For the two units, yeah. How are the plans, Mr. Pisani? The drawings are adequate. Excuse me? Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, John Allison, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, on behalf of Josh McFadden, we'd like to go on record in support. Um, it's our understanding there was an abutters meeting held, and the proponent does have letters of support from some abutters. Thank you. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? May I have a motion, please? Motion for approval of BPDA design review. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries with that proviso. Thank Calling you. DOA 738 439 99 to 1037 Hill Avenue. This is a change occupancy to include veterinary clinic. Violations Article 65, Section 15. Animal <laughs> Hospital is forbidden. Name and address for the record, please. Deferring. Patrick Mahoney, 350 West Broadway from Adams and Morancy, seeking a deferral to the subcommittee if possible. Um, are we going to have it at the full, full board? Okay. Okay, 
So may I have a motion for deferral? Motion for deferral. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, the date, please. We can do October 17th. Okay, thank you. Calling next case, calling BOA 701-484-331 Columbia Road. This is erect a new three family, three parking space, a garage on ground floor and construct a rear deck in an existing vacant lot. The violation is Article 65, Section 42.2, conformity with an existing building alignment. Article 65, Section 8, three family detached dwelling is a forbidden use. Article 65, Section 9, the lot area is insufficient. Article 65, the lot width is insufficient. Article 65, the lot frontage is insufficient. Article 65, Section 9, the floor to air ratio is excessive. Article 65, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. And Article 65, Section 9, the number of stories is excessive. Name and address for the record, please. Good uh, morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is George Morancy. I'm an attorney with the business address at 350 West Broadway in South Boston. I'm joined by my client, Harion Carbonara. Uh, Madam Chair, members, this is an application for uh, a new three-family dwelling at 329-331 Columbia Road, which is at the corner of Hamilton Street um, in, uh, in, in Richfield, actually, where the streets merge uh, in Ward 15 in Dorchester. Uh, the uh, building uh, is in uh, a two-web zoning district. It would be a three-family dwelling, hence the use violation. Uh, the three units would be two bedroom, two bath units. Unit one would be 1,123 square feet, as would be unit two. Uh, unit three is slightly larger at 1,263 uh, square feet. Uh, the zone requirements of the district, aside from the forbidden use, uh, have a maximum building height of two and a half stories and 35 feet. We're well with under the maximum vertical feet for the building. Uh, or vertical uh, height limit for the building. The building uh, is itself 30 feet 5 inches. It is located on a, uh, a plot that is pronouncedly sloped up from all of the surrounding streets, but the building itself is just over 30 feet in height. Uh, there is an FAR violation. Uh, this project would commit an FAR of about 0.7. The maximum FAR in this 2F district is, uh, is 0.4. Uh, the lot is uh, fairly generously sized. Uh, the parcel is 5,359 square feet, uh, but for uh, you know, even a one-unit uh, building in this district, the minimum lot size requirement is 6,000 square feet, so we are just shy of that by 641 square feet. The building would have a rear yard setback of uh, between 20 uh, feet and 22 and a half feet, depending on which side of the building we're looking at owing to the, uh, the, the shape of the lot. The minimum rear yard setback under the code is 30 feet, so we're just shy of that by a little bit, uh, by between 8 and 10 feet. Uh, the side yards have generous setbacks of uh, 10 feet on the right side of the building, uh, and uh, actually 12 feet and uh, 10 feet on the, uh, on the left side of the building. Uh, the front of the building um, is, the attempt was made to, to conform with existing building alignment, as I said. Uh, there's uh, some difficulty with the site because of the, uh, the pronounced slope up. So there needs to be, the building needs to be set back sufficiently on Columbia Road to allow for a stair up to, uh, to reach the grade uh, of, the, uh, of the building plane. Uh, there was a community process. My understanding is that uh, there was community support for the project. My client advised that uh, both uh, the abutters were in support uh, as well as uh, uh, awards of support from the Main Streets program. Uh, finally, there are three off-street parking spaces for the three units. Uh, the parking is indicated on uh, your sheet uh, A1, uh, which is four sheets in. Uh, there are three parking spaces, and they measure 10 feet by 20 feet. And the access is via Hamilton? Um, by Hamilton? Yes, by Hamilton. Okay. Um, is there parking on that side of the street? Um, so there is a, currently there is off street parking on that side of the street, so, yes. Okay, um, how are the plans, Mr. Pisani? <coughs> Barrings are adequate. And are there roof decks proposed on this? No roof decks. No, okay. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chairman, members of the board, Flavio de Vega, Mayor's Office, Neighborhood Services. 
Uh, we did uh, uh, held two budgets meeting as well as the Civic Association. They were all in support. We'll go ahead and support this project. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe McEachern, City Councilor Frank Baker's office, would like to go on record in support. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, on behalf of the Council at Large, Michael Flaherty, I'd like to go on record in support. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? Please put your name and address on the record. Gentlemen. My name is Almeida Bond. I live 333 Columbia Road. I've been there since 1968. And you're in opposition? Yes, I am. For what reason? For reason, the suicide. Suicide. I witnessed that corner kill. That is the worst corner in Boston. I seen ch six children <coughs> slaughtered in the street. That's why the light is up there. I see, I, I can't describe because I'm on the corner and I, I see everything now and I even see more since I retired 32 years with the federal government. This corner, um, Susie, Susie had had that company. The trucks come and it used to crash under that bridge. They raised that bridge so they could have access to Susie. But what they did, they built a pillar that would hold up a stadium. I seen a motorcycle man get crushed. And you could go right down to the records, and I'm telling you, not, it's nothing wrong with having good neighbors. It's nothing wrong, because that builds up the neighbor, giving more people to develop. But I'm telling you now, build, but you got to make sure if you put anybody in that house and they have a garage and they back out, you're, 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 you're charged with murder. Now I'm putting it as clear as I can put it. Thank you. All right. Okay. Any thoughts about the vehicles backing out of that, gar that garage? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, ma'am. You can talk that there. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Barbara Garlington, and I live at number 16 Hamilton Street. I'm opposed to this, this uh, building up of Hamilton Street with those uh, suggestions that they have in front of you. I speak for the children. I'm a school teacher. Those children have to come. Hamilton Street is very congested, going and coming. Those children have to come down Hamilton Street into Columbia Road to the junior high up there. And it's a lot of them coming in the morning. And that street is very congested up and down. I am a senior citizen. I need medical transportation. If you build in an underground railroad, how are we going to get it? How are they going to get in and out of that underground, not railroad, underground garage without blocking? That means my medical people, I have congestive heart failure. My medical people can't get through to take me to the hospital. Why? Because they have taken the few parking places that we have that we know are not legally ours, so to speak. They have taken those and they have replaced with those garages and what's under the garages, the cars. Um, that's it. That's what I'm concerned with, the citizens, citizens, and the children. And I thank you. Thank you. Um, may I have a motion, please? Motion for approval with BPD and design. Second. And can we also have BTD, BTD review to see if there's any way of responding to the, to the concerns of the neighborhood? I'll add that as the second proviso. And I'll still second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? You're all set with those provisos. Hey, Good thank luck. Thank you. Calling BOA 739 924 251 Bowdoin Street. This is a change of occupancy from a computer training lab and three apartments to computer training lab and four transient lodging on the second and third floor. 
violations, Article 65, Section 15. Transient lodging is for forbidden use, and Article 65, Section 41, insufficient off-street parking. Name and address for the record, please. 251 Bowdoin Street. My name is Jean-Luc de Barros. Vernon Woodworth, 9 Elizabeth Street in Mattapan. So please um, tell us what's being proposed. So the owner's business plan continues to evolve. He has occupied the ground floor with a uh, business. He is on the premises. The upper two floors are still vacant. Uh, as he researches the opportunities for that floor, he's determined that transient lodging would be preferable to his uh, revenue sources. Uh, and he has appeared before the neighborhood group and uh, received support for this. Uh, this project will involve fully sprinklering the building, and finally, uh, the building will be fully occupied. So tell us, what's the zoning district? It's a shopping district. I think, I believe it's neighborhood so shopping. It's neighborhood yeah. shopping. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the ground floor is a permitted use. Yes, local convenience. Yes. So it's an LC. Okay. Um, so, um, the, so the school is a permitted use on the ground floor. Yeah. And so you're looking for relief for the trend for the housing. Correct. How, how many um, how many residents are, is 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 just anticip are anticipated? Four. four yeah. It would be four bedrooms. It'd be four bedrooms, shared bathroom facilities, or yes. shared facilities, independent. Yeah, independent. Independent sanitary okay. facilities, uh, shared cooking. No. No. No cooking. Okay, how are the plans, Mr. Bazzani? The drawings are adequate. Basically, it shows uh, four studios of uh, independent So it's four studios. How large are each one of those studios? Um, they're 356, 480, 394. Looks like it's 480 again. I'm sorry? Looks two of them are 480. The two appear to be uh, close to 400. Okay. How do you define transit lodging? Under 90 days for occupancy. So who will, be, who will it be marketed to? Largely to uh, relatives of residents of the area who are visiting uh, or tourists, artists who want to come to Boston. So this is Airbnb. You're furnishing them? Will they be furnished? Really? Yes. Yes. You're gonna, yes. And uh, who will be managing the property? Uh, so far, I will be a donor. Uh, we'll see uh, if I can get someone who can help me to manage the, the, the building. The, the, the building. Where will, where will these units be advertised? Will they be on a, like a website like Airbnb? Have you decided yeah. how it will be advertised? Yeah, he'd be, yeah, yeah he'd he would be. have a he would have a business website. We're looking at um, uh, the front of the building. Is that all parking on the side? Is that another property, or is that part of this property? That's an adjacent retail store. And that's not part of this ownership. No. I got a parking on the, on the side. Do you? No, no. No. I don't have that. No. They have the, the, the CD parking. So, so, from what, from, so, so let me just see if I get this right. There will, there's going to be four bedrooms, four studio units yeah. in the range of 400 to four, four something square feet. There will be um, no management. Um, proposed right now of the of the building. Uh, stays will be uh, under 90 days. Each unit will be furnished and there will be a business website to market this this business. Anything else you want to add to that? Well, just regarding management, the owner will be in the building and will be responsible, obviously, for the management of the property. Okay. I didn't want to suggest that I was Oppose the Airbnb. I've used them in other cities myself. So. Okay. Right, I'm just a little confused. The, on the drawings on the A2 floor plan, 
It seems like it shows a range. I thought you said there wasn't any kitchen facility. Did you have a, a, a range, a stove? Uh, where? On a... He's seeing it on the floor plan. On the where? So on the floor plan, just a lo stove. Looking at the plans, yep. clearly they show four independent units, right? Oh, uh, with yep. cooking facilities. And uh, is there a second means of egress, or does there need to be a second means of egress on this? As a fully sprinkled building, the okay, three does. floors are okay. allowed a single means. And I guess uh, I stand corrected. The intention was to provide small kitchens. Okay. Each unit has its own small kitchen. Yes. Yeah. Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Madam Chairman, members of the board, Flavia de Vega, Mayor's Office, Neighborhood Services. The applicant has support from Main Street as well as the uh, Civic Association. We'll go ahead and support this project. Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe McEachern, City Council, Frank Baker's office would like to go on record and support. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? May I have a motion, please? Motion for approval. Uh, is there really any exterior work? Yes. Yes. The the yes. New yes. windows, new siding. Yeah. yeah we, we already should. did all. Yes, it's Second. all been approved. Fair Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. You're all set. Thank Dr. Weiser. Thank you very much. Calling BOA 691-485-50 Richfield Street. First floor living space to the basement and build one new room in the rear addition. The violation of Article 65, Section 9, the fluidity ratio was excessive. Name and address for the record, please. Hello, good morning, members of the board. My name is Cesar De Silva, representing this uh, office. Thank you. Okay, so you have one. So tell us this. So this is a proposal to extend the first floor into the basement and to build a new one-room rear addition. And the only violation you have is FAR. So right. tell us what the FAR is for the zoning and what you, what's being proposed by this extension into the basement. Okay, excuse me here, I do the uh, next one. Yeah, uh, yeah, excuse me, the high F yeah. is actually uh, 0.5, we are proposing 10% per uh, percent. is actually just extended the living space on the plans right here. And, and tell us about the height of the, of the ceiling in the basement, floor to ceiling height? 7.6. Seven, 7.6, six. Seven, six. Mm -hmm. okay. That's the existing, or that's what you're going to do? Uh, that's actually existing. The 7-6 is the... And this is a one-family or a two-family? No, this is actually a three-family. Three-family? Yeah. How are the plans, Mr. Bazzani? The drawings are adequate. shows a direct connection from the rear of the kitchen down into the lower basement space. Any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, Flavia de Vega, Mayor's Office, Neighborhood Services, would like to go on record and support. Each uh, applicant has support from Director Butters as well as the Boat in Geneva Neighborhood Council. Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe McEachern, City Council, Frank Baker's Office, would like to go on record and support. Madam Chair, members of the board, Jawan Skeens, Councilor Campbell's Office, we would like to go on record and support. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, I'm going to the council at large, Michael Flaherty, can I select you on record and support? Thank you. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? May I have a motion, please? Motion to approval DPDA design review for exterior work. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. You're set with that proviso. Thank you. Thank you. Board. Calling BOA 705-797-137 Granite Avenue. Granite Avenue here? Yep, right okay. here. This is an application to change the use of parcel A, an area of 3,900 square feet from a 1F 5,000 residential zone to ancillary use of 135 Granite Avenue for 15 parking spaces. The address to be 137 Granite Avenue in the Dorchester District. The violation of Article 65, Section 8 
Ancillary parking is a conditional use in a 1F 5,000 district. In Article 65, Section 39, screening and buffering is required. Name and address for the record, please. Attorney Daniel McDevitt, 2 Granite Avenue in Milton. Tell us what's being proposed. Yes. So uh, the, the cemetery, Cedar Grove Cemetery, which I'm sure most of you are familiar, has been around for about 150 years. They did a, a survey of available Thank land you. for graves. And uh, as part of that, they came to the realization that this small strip of land has, has been uh, was cemetery land and had been leased in an informal and then a semi-formal way to the owners of the condominium at 135 Granite Avenue, which is a 42-unit building, and uses a piece of cemetery land for 15 improved parking spaces. So I met with the trustees uh, of the cemetery, and we realized that the first step would be to get the zoning changed from open space cemetery. So we went through that process and got the map changed. And uh, this particular small strip of land is now 1F5000, uh, which is the most restrictive uh, zoning in that neighborhood. Uh, we then petitioned to uh, have this land uh, zoned as ancillary parking for the benefit of the condominium association and that building so that we could legally lease them the 15 parking spaces in an arrangement that's been going on for about 35 years. The cemetery's desire is to continue to use this space as a, a perpetual income stream because they do have an obligation for perpetual care of the graves. It also gives a tremendous benefit to the neighborhood because without this being legally uh, ancillary parking to the building, if those 15 units didn't have a parking space that would push those 15 cars out into the neighborhood. Since there is no parking on Granite Avenue, it would further impact the street further away. And we had substantial uh, number of sidewalk meetings and, and community meetings. Uh, joining me is Charles Tevnan, who is the volunteer so president can I just, of the board. Uh, go back um, to your violations. So you have two violations. One is the conditional use ancillary parking and the second is the screening and buffering. What's preventing the screening and buffering from occurring? Because it doesn't look like you have much frontage on Granite Ave. Well, What's preventing that? Uh, I think what the, the idea of the screening and buffering would be that that would be a design review with BPDA after approval because right now the screening is the natural leaves on the trees and things like that. And I think what they were talking about is they wanted to make sure that as in the future, as the cemetery has expanded closer to these cars, that no one who was attending a graveside ceremony would see someone bringing their groceries in or vice versa. So the cemetery has, has uh, an ambitious plan to put uh, fencing around the whole perimeter of the property at this uh, in this area with stockade fence, but they do know that they need design review approval and that they couldn't get that approval until we got the ancillary use. So although it is a violation, the current screening has been vegetation uh, because for the last 35 years, you could not see any graves. It's only within the last year that the cemetery came somewhat close. Okay, hold on, hold on. How are the plans, Mr. Pisani? Drawings are adequate. Any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is David Cotter from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We'd like to go on record in support. Um, we've had a, a pretty robust community conversation regarding this. Uh, what's before the board today is a smaller piece in a larger plan for the cemetery. Um, some of the cemetery's other plans are rather controversial, but what's before you today to legalize a parking situation that has been in place for the last several decades um, is supported by both the abutters and the City of Grove Civic Association. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe McEachern, City Council, Frank Baker's office would like to go on record and support. Thank you. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. Is there a design review for screening and buffering? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. You're all set with Thank that you proviso. Very much. Calling the next case, calling BOA 730-779-48 Oak Street.
This is to construct a single story, 10 foot by 17 foot addition at the rear of the, of the dwelling. The violation is Article 69, Section 9, insufficient side yard setback. Name and address for the record, please. I've been Hernandez, 111 Baker Street, West Roxbury. Um, we're proposing an expansion of the existing kitchen, uh, five by seven kitchen, and as you stated, uh, proposing a uh, 10 by 17 um, addition, uh, which increases the uh, floor area by 100 square feet. Um, currently, current building is slightly skewed to the property line, so it's also existing non-conforming with a four and a half foot setback. Four and a half feet from the side line. What's required? Uh, ten. ten. Yeah. How are the plans, Mr. Bazzani? The drawings are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. Brian Flynn with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Uh, and the butters being was held on August 2nd with uh, no, no negative feedback from the community. Uh, we're going to go on the record in support of this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Walter Applewhite, Council McCarthy's office. We'd also like to go on record in support. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? Can we have a motion, please? Motion for approval. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries with that proviso. Good luck. Thank you. Calling BOA 7350026, 438 River Street. This is the changing occupancy of a one daycare center to a body art parlor and unit one, no signage on this applicant and no work will be no work will be done other than painting. Violations Article 60, Section 40, off street parking. Parking is insufficient and Article 60, Section 8, bo body art is the forbidden use. Name and address for the record, please. Hi, my name is Eric James. Address is um, 434 Huntington Ave, High Park. Um, I'm well aware of the off-street parking and- Tell us what you're proposing. Uh, my proposal is to change the occupancy from daycare to body art establishment. How many chairs will you have? Um, just three. Three? Three. And your hours of operation? Hours of operations is from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Every day of the week? Yes, Sunday except Sundays. except Sundays. Residential building? No. No? No, it's commercial property. It's right next to the Oh, okay. 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 How are the plans, Mr. Bazzani? Drawings are adequate. Any questions from the board? What is happening with the daycare? Uh, the daycare is taking the other half of the building. There's um, three units. So they're going to stay there? Yes. Okay. It's just downsizing. No sign. Uh, no, I want it to be a private studio. Okay, is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Madam Chairman, members of the board, Ruth George from Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. I know Butters meetings was held um, for this proposed project, and at this meeting there were elected officers that were there in addition to residents. Um, he completed the process and we communicated with him in regards to him flyering and getting the information out there to our residents. And uh, we all, our office also sent out the Abutters flyer to the entire community. Um, and within that meeting there was no opposition from any of the offices in regards to him coming in. So our office would like to go on records and support. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kimberly Parker. I am um, a resident in the neighborhood. and. I am um, in support of giving. What's your address? I'm, I'm on Huntington Ave, off of River Street. Okay. And um, I'm in support of giving Mr. Um, a young man a chance to start a business um, and to okay. open a business. Thank you. Thank you. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? Cassandra Cato Lewis, 7 Riverbank Place in Mattapan. I'm the direct abutter behind the building, which is currently operating as a daycare center with <clears throat> extremely limited parking. On my way out here today, they were parked across my driveway. 
So um, as far as the community process, I never received a flyer. The word I got was from the owner and the gentleman who, when he came to look at the building one time, I happened to be there, he knocked on the door. I have never received a flyer, never received an email. MyMatapan.org, MU's communications organ, never posted that there would be a community meeting. The community meeting was not well attended. I did not get notice until the day of the meeting, an hour or two prior to the meeting, when I was not even in town. There have... So your concern is parking and the problems with the process? Correct. Okay. Also, the, um, the fact that it's actually operating as a daycare center and it hasn't been approved. The, the, the original daycare center has been closed for about four or five years, and now a church is up there creating noise, and there's no mention of the church. So is the church still allowed in the building? So, so all we're looking at today is the proposal for the body art, nothing else. Okay, okay. so the, the body art, I'm, I'm for it. The community process, flawed. It should stop and restart. Okay. I'm, I'm not opposed to the young man having a business as the lady from Hyde Park okay. who will not be affected by the tattoo par parlor is in support of, but the parking is definitely a problem. The building next door has a parking lot, but the two owners are not connected, and then there's going to be another building of 137 units at the T station, so the limited parking that's on the other side of the building will also be gone. Thank so. You. It, the you. parking is going to be a major issue. Thank you. Walter. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Um, there was a community meeting. Uh, uh, it's a tough situation. Uh, at this point, we would pro we were opposed because we would definitely think that the uh, neighborhood, as you can see, could probably weigh in a little bit more on the business. Um, at this particular time, there's enough questions that we can't go on record as supporting the process, I'm sure with uh, more meeting, more time, and more clarity, they probably could come to an agreement. But at this time, we can't support it. Thank you. Can I just ask Walter a question? Walter, is it, it, does Council McCarthy's office know that this is being operated as a daycare that has no It was a daycare years ago. I don't believe the daycare is still in existence. Um, we did call in, uh, I believe, to ISD about the uh, church um, that was running out of the business after uh, some of the abutters complained. So I think when the daycare closed, the building was just sort of, you know. I just, I just don't know if everybody, we're just here for this gentleman here yeah, to no, try to open up this. Uh, we, we are phone. familiar with the building, okay. but I believe the daycare, even though it was owned the daycare, it was run, I believe, by Walter Little for years, but I don't know if it's, I think the daycare is not even there anymore. Uh, Thank you. Is this, uh, do you know who owns the building? Does Walter own this building? This building? I, I, does Walter Little still? Yeah, Dave Mariano. Okay, okay, thank you for the clarification. Go ahead. Thank you. Madam Chairman and members of the board, Tina Patigny, Executive Director of Mattapan Square Main Streets. And we are coming in opposition because uh, we have absolutely had no interaction with this gentleman. We wouldn't have an op uh, a problem giving him an opportunity to own a business in the square, but this is the first time I'm laying eyes on him. He hasn't reached out to the Main Street. Therefore, our businesses and abutters who um, some of my board members are uh, businesses that abut the property have had absolutely no knowledge of uh, this business coming. Thank so you. we would love the process to Thank you. Madam Chairman and members of the board, my name is Gwendolyn Middleton, and I'm a resident of three Bluefield Terrace in Mattapan. I'm here in opposition. For the main reason, um, it was stated as body art, and we all know that it's a tattoo parlor. And if that's going to be adjacent with children as far as daycare, I'm, I'm opposed. But not only for that reason, the real reason that I'm really opposed is because I work with the substance abuse community. And when they receive their SSI checks, they go and they have tattoos put on their body. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Good afternoon. Thank you for your time, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Cheryl McLeod, and I live at 26 Marola Park in Mattapan. I feel that the process has been disingenuous. I received a notice from Ms. George's office two weeks ago and uh, about the body art powder slash uh, daycare center. And some of my neighbors asked, uh, around 77 years of age in my neighborhood, asked me what a body art parlor was. And when I said it was a tattoo parlor, they got really upset. So I'm sort of representing residents of Marola Park here today. Um, I feel that the process is sort of, um, again, disingenuous also. There's a meeting on the 20th where Mr. James is coming to speak to Mattapan residents. Um, it's on the agenda and the notice from Ms. George said to talk about the new tattoo parlor as if it's a done deal. And I felt that that discouraged a lot of people um, from coming. I would like to respectfully request that um, we don't have an objection. I don't have an objection to the parlor per se, but that, that it be denied until Mr. James comes to the community, that there's more time for the community to understand that it's a tattoo parlor, um, and he answer any questions, um, if, especially on the meeting on September 20th, and then maybe come back and give the community more clarity. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Sierra Khan. I'm uh, creative director of Mattapan Cultural Arts Development. Ordinarily, we would be big boosters of anything related to the creative economy, but I uh, also just want to voice objections regarding the community process, which was lacking, um, and also concerned about the parking pressures, as well as public health questions about the mold uh, problem that was in that building that I don't have any indication that that was ever eradicated. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, may I have a motion, please? Uh, I, I, I'd like to make a motion to defer. I think that uh, the objections are not mostly, per se, to your application, but to the whole building and the whole uh, situation surrounding it and the lack of process. And um, I would encourage you to uh, uh, go back and have that process and then come back here. So I'll make a motion to defer. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Also, you should probably bring the building owner to the to the building because it sounds like there are questions no. above and beyond your proposal related to this. Okay. All right. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. And I got to get, I gotta get you a date. date. We need to get you a date. Um, well, we have October thirty first, which is available. Okay. I can take that. At eleven thirty on October thirty first. Calling the next three cases. <coughs> Calling BOA 7225015858 Starbird Avenue. Calling BOA 7225040060 Starbird Avenue. And case BOA 7225052 Starbird Avenue. Both 58 and 60 have the same purpose, which is I'm going to read demolish existing two family dwelling on an existing 15,490 square foot lot. On a newly created 5,000 square foot lot, erect a new two and a half story family dwelling with roof deck. There will be off street parking for four vehicles in the rear yard. All three have different violations, but I'm going to read into the record the, viol uh, the uh, purpose on the uh, 62 Starbird. It's demolished the existing two family dwelling on a 15,490 square foot lot on a newly created 5,490 square foot lot. The violations for 58 is Article 67, Section 8. The two-family two dwelling is of forbidden use. Article 67, Section 9, the lot area is insufficient. Article 67, Section 9, the lot width is insufficient. Article 67, Section 9, the lot frontage is insufficient. Article 67, the floor to air ratio is excessive. Article 67, the usable open space is insufficient. And Article 67, Section 9, the front yard is insufficient. This is for 60 Starbird. The violations of Article 67, Section 9, the lot area for additional dwelling units is insufficient. Article 67, Section 9, the fluidity ratio is excessive. And Article 67, Section 9, usable open space is insufficient. The same violation is for 62 Starbird Avenue. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chairman and members of the board. I'm Matthew Watsky. There is counsel for the applicant. Uh, my offices are at 30 Eastbrook Road, Suite 301, Dedham, Massachusetts. <clears throat> so it looks like you are um, creating three. So tell us, what is the zoning district? What's the required lot area? And tell us what the violations are, what's required, and what's being proposed. OK, glad to. Uh, first, actually, the, each of these lots 
are pre-existing lots. They were created by a recording of a subdivision plan in 1927. Um, each of them has 50 feet of frontage um, and about 100 feet of depth. Uh, there's an existing two-family house that's partially located on all of them, and the assessor's office has taxed all three of them together as a single parcel. But in the, in the registry, in the, the, the actual plan is, uh, exists in the, in the record. So okay. we are so, we are reusing three existing okay. lots. So that means that that takes care of the violation that's lot frontage, but then you have the other violations. Yes, I'll go through them. So why don't I describe the, the existing uh, conditions first? You have an existing two-family on the three lots. Uh, that that structure is uh, uninhabitable uh, as it exists due to severe uh, water damage. Uh, on 58, you, um, you have, uh, well, for all of them, there's an existing rear yard setback. Excuse me, sir, can you please just talk to, to okay. us about the proposal? Okay. okay. So we can get an understanding of what's, what's going on here? Yes. Uh, we're proposing to demolish the existing structure, replace it with three separate structures, each is a two-family, uh, one located on each of the different lots. For the two lots that are in the two-family zoning district, which is the 2F5000, uh, that's lot 60 and, and number 62, we comply with uh, the front yard, rear yard, and side yard, and height uh, dimensional requirements. Uh, the, uh, 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 the structure, <coughs> excuse me, as it's cited, uh, we, we propose on 58 Starbird to have it have the same front yard setback as the uh, as the other two structures, um, in part because uh, you have that two-family zone next to it, and uh, as we've provided in the appeal and analysis, that the uh, uh, almost all of the existing structures up and down Starbird Ave as well as Charm Street have similar setbacks to what we've proposed. How about the FAR? What's okay. required and what are you proposing? FAR is, uh, is a .50. Uh, as a result of the community meetings that we had, we have redesigned the property, the, the structure, to reduce the FAR so that on 62 Starboard, which has 15,547 square feet of land area, uh, the revised plan complies with FAR. Um, and that's shown in the, uh, in the revised plan that was provided. We submitted it to inspectional services, and I understand that there was a revised letter that was submitted into the board from inspectional services. Um, okay. The, Mr. We, Pisani, do you have the revised drawings? I have the drawings dated August 4th, 2017. That's correct. Okay, how are the plans? The plans are fine. They're adequate. Yeah, it sets up a good um, a good um, pattern for the yeah, street. Yeah. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Daniel Murphy from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Uh, just want to comment on the community process uh, that had been facilitated at the meeting. Um, you know, there was some initial reservations regarding some of the things that uh, Mr. Wosky had. Uh, addressed on the revised plan. So the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services would like to go on record of support with consideration to the fact that they um, comply with the FAR and a continued BPD de design review in, in addition to um, community concerns regarding privacy fencing on the um, deck and um, around the area in general. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Jawan Skeens, Council of Campbell's office, we would like to go on record in support of this project. Thank you. Thank you. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? Good morning, Madam Chairman and the board. <clears throat> I have a statement and I want and I would like to read it if you don't Madam, mind. Ma'am, first, My, first put your name and address on the record. My name is Priscilla Flint. Banks and my address is 64 Starbird Avenue, Roslindale. Okay, and can you, not, instead of reading us the letters, tell us exactly what your concern is 
my concern is that is the one family house standing there now and they want to turn it uh, it's a two family one building yeah. and they want to make three families two stories and that is going to cause a lot of problems as far as um, traffic and it, we live in a cul-de-sac and we are already getting a lot of cars that come through there that have to turn around because it's literally a dead end and there's also the the um, the problem, there's, a, there's some type of water damage that's going on down there. I don't know what that's about. But we just feel like it's gonna be too dense to put three, two family houses in that area. And I also have a petition that was signed by some of the members in, in a button on Charm Ave and Starbird Ave that said that they are against it. And uh, so can you please put it on the record with this uh, young lady over here? <coughs> Thank you. Give her a copy of it? Yes, yes, you could. Is anybody else to speak in opposition? Okay, given this information, may I have a motion, please? Motion for approval of your EBDA design review for number 58 Starboard Avenue, same for number 60 Starboard Avenue, and same for number 62 Starboard Avenue. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? motion carries with that proviso. Before I call the next case for 1030, uh, I'm going to call the 1130s. Are there any deferrals or withdrawals for the 1130s rediscussions? Address, please. Uh, 729, 731 East, uh, East 5th Street. For the record, calling BOA 715-525-729 to 731 East 5th Street. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, my name is James Christopher with the business address of 415 Neponset Ave. Uh, at this time, we've, at the request of the mayor's office, we requested deferral. Um, we'd made some design re revisions uh, based on our first community meeting. We'd like to go back and share them with the community before we come back to the board. Motion deferred. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The date, please. Uh, October 31st. Thank you. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals for 1130? Hearing none, we'll go back. I'll call, them, I'll call them as they come in. All right, I'm going to go back to the 1030s. Uh, calling BOA 732-993, 34 Maple Street. There's also a building code BOA 732-993, 34 Maple Street. This is to change of oxygen from a two to three family dwelling and legalize the existing three family dwelling. No existing off street parking or fire sprinkler system and no work to be proposed. The violation is Article 56, Section 39, off street parking is insufficient. And Article 56, Section 7, three family dwelling is forbidden use. This is for building code 780-1014, uh, exit access, multiple tenants, where more than one tenant occupies any floor of a building or a structure. 780-1022, exit enclosures, enclosures required interior ex exit stairways and e interior exit ramp shall be enclosed within the fire barriers. 780 <coughs> 912.21, fire sprinkler system where a change in oxygen classification occurs that requires the fire, uh, 912.22, the fire alarm and detection system where a change in oxygen classification occurs that requires a fire alarm and detection system. A means of egress and a higher hazard, 912.41. Means of egress for change and a higher, when a change of oxygen classification is made to a higher hazard. And 912.72 stairways when a change of oxygen classification is made to a higher hazard category. And openings uh, of the 912.74 into existing vertical shaft enclosures shall be protected. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair and the rest of the board. Uh, my name is Rashi Monglik. I'm with McDermott, Quilty, and Miller. Uh, to my left, I have Lucio Trabuco, with, uh, who's the architect on the premises. To my right is Poloniki Giannakopoulos, who is the owner of the premises. And to my far right is Father Peter Giannakopoulos, who is her son. Um, I will address the, the package you received in a second, um, but I do want to address the transaction today is to bring this premises up to the code. It's been existing for several years. Um, the owner has owned the premises since the 1970s, almost 50 years. Um, and so we're really 
bringing this premises up to code, which is already in existence. We wish to change the occupancy from two family to three family, as well as uh, address the off-street parking that it already uh, contains. The owner, uh, as I say, stated, Ms. Poloniki, she has lived there for several years. She's a, a stalwart. Uh, well, can we just, uh, as is our usual case, we like to have the building code violations addressed first. Okay. So uh, who is going to take that? So that I'll leave that to. Yeah, I can, I can answer those questions. Um, the stairs, right now, the existing stairs, there's a half inch plywood around the enclosure. We need one hour fire rating. We will install five eighths inch plywood, I mean, uh, five inch inch fire rated drywall around the, the, the stair enclosure. Also, the, the front stair dumps from the attic dumps into the second floor unit. We have modified that area so that there is no interference or dumping into the second floor unit. A big brand new fire alarm as well as a brand new ask you, as, sure. I, as I scan this, do you actually need any of these uh, building code? Because it looks like from your statements here, you will be addressing all of them? Yes. You will be addressing all yes. of the building code? Yes, that's why I was going through that list of... Okay, uh, so then you do not require building code relief. Motion to deny building code relief because it is all being complied. Yeah, it'll, it'll be okay. done, basically. It'll, it'll be done as well, it'll be complied. Okay, is there a second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so let's get to the merits of the case. Sure. Now you look like you have this two violations. There's the forbidden use because this is a one family 6,000 and this is a three family. Uh, and then the insufficient parking. What's required on the parking and what's being proposed? Yes, yeah, so uh, currently, the um, so Article 56, Table I, as you have on page two of your package, uh, states that uh, up to three parking spots are allowed because there are three units in the premises. So um, and there's one, one space per dwelling unit? Exactly. Um, and you can see that on page two of your uh, package that uh, you received. And so we just wish we, the, the owner currently has two parking spaces, and so we just wish to bring that up to code. Currently, there are a lot, there's an allotment for three parking spaces. We just want two and no more increase than that. So tell us about the unit sizes, the first, second, and third floor unit sizes. Sure. So the first floor uh, has two bedrooms, uh, one at about 110 square feet, and the second bedroom at approximately 160 square feet. Uh, the second floor has three bedrooms, uh, with the first being at 110 square feet, second at 160, and third at about 90. And then the third floor, which we wish to bring into the uh, into compliance, has one bedroom simply and at about 90 square feet. Uh, I think what we're really asking is what is the square footage of each of the units? Of oh, the units? Oh. Yeah, I can answer. The, the, first, the first floor unit is around 1,700 square feet. The second floor is it's a, a little bit bigger because of the way the porch is, about uh, almost 1,800 square feet. And the attic, it's like around 1,100 square feet. 1,100. And what's yeah, the floor bit, to ceiling height? a little bit less than 1,100 square feet. Because we're looking at the drawings. Um, what's the floor to ceiling height in the attic? The floor ceiling height in the attic, this, I'm doing this on uh, memory though, so. I'm sorry? I'm doing this on memory. I, I don't remember exactly what, what it is, but it's over seven feet. Because it's a, is it a pitch roof? It's a pitch roof, but the, the pitch of the roof is, it's steep, so that, that the, the attic is, is within that pitch of the roof. Now, this has been occupied for how many years? I mean, this is basically an existing condition, right? Exactly. An existing condition. And yes. for how many years has it been occupied? Uh, uh, Ms. Giannacopoulos has owned it since the 1970s, so... Uh, almost 50 years. Exactly. And has it been paying taxes as a three-family? <laughs> um, that I'm not sure on. I've been paying taxes as a... Yes. For two, uni two units or three units? Okay. Two-family or three-family? Well, well, 
I mean, basically, aside from correcting the building code violation, there's no work being done. Is that correct? That's it. So what we have is three owners that have been there for 50 years. Yeah, the owners have been there for, you know. And, and, and the paperwork's not up to speed. So yeah. it hasn't been taxed as a two or a three? It sounds like it's been taxed as a two, but the second unit incorporated the third unit's taxes. Okay, so it was. But it's been occupied as a three the entire time? Right. So the attic was never lived in Just as part of the second. Exactly. It was all separate. So, so there, there are two electric meters, it's not three. It's two electric meters. So it's two electric meters. Okay. Um, any other questions from the board? Um, Ms. Pisani, did I ask you if the plans were adequate? The dra drawings are adequate. Yeah. I mean, it's clear that it's three worker uh, units. Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Jack Duggan, Neighborhood Services, just like to go on record support. We had a uh, community meeting back in July where several, a handful of neighbors uh, came over and, you know, they all expressed their support for this project. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Shannon Murphy from City Council and Matt O'Malley's office. The council would like to go on record in support of this project. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, on behalf of City Council at large, Michael Flaherty, council like to go on record in support. Thank you. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? Can we have a motion, please? Motion for approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Correct. Calling BOA 728 998 1964 to 1966 Center Street. This is construct an addition to an existing building with interior renovations. The violation of Article 56, Section 16, insufficient rear yard setbacks. Name and address for the record, please. Hi, my name is Tom Mulvey, 87 Garnett Road, Miss Roxbury, Mass. I'm uh, acting as the owner's representative for this project. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and, and the board. Uh, Can anybody else at the table be speaking? Uh, if they want to. <laughs> uh, this is the architect, Frank Mazzulli. And this Frank Mazzulli, I'm the architect. Thank you. My associate, Ed Roche. Thank you. So uh, please briefly tell us what's being proposed. Uh, we're proposing to uh, expand the, the left side of this, uh, this uh, commercial uh, business. Uh, it's a veterinary hospital. Uh, there is a footprint already. So this is across from the library? Yes, it is. Yeah. So that work is already underway, right? Yes, we've yeah. done some uh, exterior uh, uh, renovations to it and uh, some interior renovations to it. And what they'd like to do is expand the second floor uh, living space uh, where they'd like to eventually move to and uh, expand the uh, veterinary operation on the first floor and in the basement with storage and, and uh, Whatever else they do. Okay, so the second floor would be a unit? Yes, it's an existing unit right now. And what would the size of the unit be? Only unit up there? Or are there yes. other units? No, just, just so it's one going to be you're adding 884 square feet. Um, um, what 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 will be the size of that uh, unit? Ed, would you know by any chance? Um, total. Yeah. Total size. Um, I believe it's under 2,000 square feet. So that 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 single unit will be 2,000 square feet. Yes. Okay. And where will the parking for that Excuse me. be? Interrupt. Yes. The, it'll be uh, just around 14, 1450. 1450 yeah. square feet. Okay. And um, and the rear yard is the only violation. What's required and what's being proposed? Yes. Did you, I'm sorry. The rear, so rear yard is 40, and you're proposing 13. How are the plans, Mr. Pisani? Drawings are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? 
morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Jack Duggan, Neighborhood Services. Just like going regular support, we had an abutters meeting back in July. Um, you know, the, the businesses directly next door in support, along with uh, West Roxbury Main Streets, they also went before the council last month and received support from the neighborhood council as well. Thank you. Madam Chair and members of the board, Shannon Murphy from City Councilor Matt O'Malley's office. The council would like to go on record in support. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, on behalf of the council at large, Michael Flaherty, the council would like to go on record in support. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? May I have a motion, please? Motion for approval of BPDA design review. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries with that proviso. Calling the next case, calling BOA 703-4929 Sawyer Terrace. There's also building code BOA 703-4919 Sawyer Terrace. This is for to construct a new three-story, three-family dwelling on an existing 2,900 square foot lot. There will be egress decks built in the rear of the yard. The building will be fully sprinkled. The violation is Article 51, Section 9. The lot area is insufficient. Article 51, lot width is insufficient. Article 51, lot frontage is insufficient. Article 51, floor to air ratio is excessive. Article 51, usable open space is insufficient. Article 51, front yard is insufficient. Article 51, section 9, side yard is insufficient. Article 51, section 9, rear yard is insufficient. Article 51, section 56, off street parking is insufficient. Article 51, section 56, off street parking design and maneuverability. Existing building lot encroachment interferes with a motor vehicle getting up to proposed parking spaces. The building code <coughs> is referenced in 521 CMR, a general, the public use and common spaces of multiple dwellings and new construction. Name and address for the record, please. Yes, Alan Brennan, Westwood Building Construction. Hey, anybody else will you be speaking to? Um, I don't know. Okay. Tell us what's being proposed. Uh, we're proposing a tree. Yeah. Uh, it's a tree unit uh, building. Um, the footprint is going to be approximately 823 square feet. It was originally over a thousand, but after we went through the Austin Civic Commission, and um, we shrunk it down to 823. It's That's going to be a sprinkled. Okay, tell us about the building code. Um, our minimum uh, lot area to start with. Um, Tell us about the building code violation. You, it's uh, the public use and common space of multiple dwellings and new construction. Um, the parking spaces. Well, we have um, two. Mr. Bazzani, can you help us with this, please? No, it has to. It has to. Well, number one, this is brand new construction, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, it is generally. The position of this board not to grant building code relief for brand new construction because that's purely a design issue. You can work your way out. So let's get a motion so on that. Motion to deny building code relief. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, now tell us about what you're proposing. These are a lot of violations. Tell us why you need all of them. Well, wait, they are um, lot size that's provided is 2,918. Um, our um, lot width, where um, what's required is 45, we have 40. Um, the frontage, what's required is 45, we have 40. Um, the FAR, we're off by 0.7. What's required is 0.07. Uh, uh, you're 0.07. off by how much? 0.07. Point, point, 0.07. 0.07, what's yeah. required? Uh, 0.08, 0, 0 and we have 0.087. 0.87. So point this eight. is, what's the zoning district? Um, the zoning on it is um, zone 3F. 3F? 3F. 3F. 3F what? 5,000? 4,000? 4,000. And so you and what's the lot area on this? The lot area that we have is 2,918 <coughs> that we have. Okay, so, so for a one or two, you need uh, 2,000, you need 4,000. And for the third unit, you need to add an exist uh, an additional two thousand. So for to construct a three family, you need six thousand square feet. That's correct. And you are about half of that. That's correct. Okay. Can I ask a question? Are you in fact subdividing this lot? 
No, this is an existing, it, there's nothing on this lot right now. Yeah, it's, already uh, it's, been it's already been subdivided. The person who wants to construct this is the lot next door. He just retired. Uh, it's a garden right now, and he wanted right, to build it for no, the I, I understand, but, but the question is that uh, it appears that the building next door, that's number nine, yeah. has been put in violation by the subdivision because their side of their building is right on the off. Could that subdivision that, come to this board? Did, well, this particular, what makes the violation here, there is an actual porch that will be removed as part of the construction so that we get uh, the, the, um, the yeah, as it encroaches on the property. Okay, that's that. I understand, but what I don't understand is why that building wasn't also cited as a violation. Because of the, the, other, the other existing building. Yeah, right. So, did that subdivision come to this board, or was it done outside of this board? Outside of this board, did I? Yeah. Okay. Do we need to hear this case, or do we need a deferral just to get a better understanding, of, so that the applicants have a, a way of cl more clearly representing the project to us? Well, I, I would maintain that this has to be looked at as the two lots, and in fact, the subdivision is causing a violation, two sets of violations. I mean, it's the violation on the existing building with the lot lines through, and there should also be a violation on the FAR, because that is below the FAR, because this is what, it's a 3F or a 2F? A tree F. Uh, how many thousand square feet? Uh, zone for tree F. Okay, so that, uh, Number nine, with th this plan, is that's only showing 2,171. So that's in violation. So there are at least multiple violations. And we also have side yard because it has no side yard. So does the uh, abutter own this lot? Yes. They own, so we should have the, uh, the owner of the lot here to explain the entire process of, of, of how this happened. Can I make a suggestion? Yes. Let's do that. They come back and well, may I have a motion? I move and deny without prejudice. Is there a second? second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so start to start sort of clean process and just bring us all the information when you're here again. Okay? Thank you. Thanks. Calling the next case, calling DOA 732 948 30 Willoughby Street. This is a rebuild and extend existing dormers and close the front porch front porch on second floor and renovate bed bedrooms, bathrooms, and kitchens on the second floor unit. The violation is Article 51, Section 9. The floor to air ratio is excessive. Right Article 51, Section 9. The building height is excessive for stories. Article 51, Section 9. The front yard is insufficient. And Article 51, Section 9. The side yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Hi, my name is David Liu. I'm a resident of 30 Willoughby Street, and this is my wife, Julie Liu. Is this a one family or a two family? It's a two family. And tell us what you're proposing. So we're proposing on the second floor, there's a, a front outside porch that we want to enclose for um, additional living space and extend existing dormers on the third floor um, for bedrooms. So that second unit will have how many bedrooms? Uh, it will have one. Second unit will have one bedroom? Uh, on the main level and then three upstairs. So three four bedrooms? Yes. Okay. Um, and your height, what, what is your proposed height? Um, it's existing dormers there, so it's not really changing. We're just extending it to the back of the house. Yeah. How are the plans, Mr. Pisani? Drawings are accurate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, Warren O'Reilly, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Uh, we have the support of the local abutters. Um, overwhelming support and the uh, support of the Brighton Olson Improvement Association. Uh, so we'd like to go in record in full support. Thank you. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Daniel Polanco on behalf of Councillor Mark Sio. I would like to go in record in support as well. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, Jessica Rodriguez, City Council at Large, Denise Saiba George's office, and she would also like to go on record in support. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan on behalf of City Council at Large, Michael Flaherty, Council to go on record in support. Madam Chair, members of the board, Annabelle Gomes from the Brighton Austin Improvement Association, we'd like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. 
Is anybody here to speak in opposition? May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve with yes, continued sure. BPBA design review. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. You're all set. Good luck. We're going to go back to one previous case uh, for 1030. Calling VOA 692-7562 to Fort Dolan's Court. Is Dolan's Court here? Madam Chair, I make a motion for denial without prejudice. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, it is now 12:15. Um, we will take a, a five-minute break and resume. Uh, sorry, it's now 12:10. We'll resume at 12:15. When you're here to, to speak about your case, please tell us why you were deferred and tell us what the resolution was since the deferral. Mr. Fortune? Yes, Madam Chair, before we uh, do the first case, we've got a little housekeeping here. Uh, the first two cases, BOA 668023, 15 to 17 Short Street, and BOA 668 Short Street are on uh, for 919 at 1030. So they've been deferred to, well, re for 919 uh, okay. at the subcommittee, I believe. Was that the subcommittee? It's, uh, it's Today's 912. Can we have a motion, okay. please? Motion to defer. Second. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the next. And then the last case, uh, calling BOA 690 834 279 Lamartine Street has withdrawn, so I'm going to make a motion for denial without prejudice. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Lamartine. Lamartine. Thank Motion you. Motion carries. Okay. So calling the first case for 1130, BOA 676-659-148 West 9th Street. This was to combine parcels into one vacant total, one vacant lot totaling 4,266 square feet and erect eight residential residential building, eight residential units with two roof decks. The violation of Article 14, Section 14-1, minimum lot size requirement is insufficient. Article 14, Section 14-2, lot area per dwelling unit is insufficient. Article 15, Section 1, the floor to air ratio is excessive. Article 17, Section 1, Usable open space is insufficient. Article 20, Section 1, the rear yard setback requirement is insufficient. And Article 23, Section 23-1, our street parking requirement is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is George Moransi. I'm an attorney with the business address of 350 West Broadway in South Boston. I'm joined by my client, the owner and developer of the project, James Muldowney. Uh, Madam Chair, members, uh, the plan submitted to the board here show uh, uh, an eight unit uh, building on a, a double lot currently vacant uh, located at 148 West 9th Street in South Boston. The lot is approximately 4,266 square feet. Uh, the building would be four stories. It would rise to a maximum building height of 40 feet. There would be a single garage door on 9th Street providing access to uh, the ground level of the building, uh, which aside from a residential entry and a one bedroom unit uh, includes seven parking spaces. Uh, this application was filed under, and uh, the, the refusal letter was issued under uh, base code zoning. Uh, so the relevant uh, zoning uh, figures uh, for the refusal letter and for purposes of this uh, uh, hearing and the, uh, and the variances that are being sought is H-150 zoning. Um, the uh, violations accrue from the fact that the lot uh, does not meet the 5,000 square foot minimum lot size under the old zoning, H-150. We have an FAR violation. The proposed FAR here is 2.6 uh, and a rear setback violation, uh, also minimum usable open space violation. There are two proposed roof decks. Uh, one to each, uh, one uh, for uh, uh, a private use of two units on the top floor. Uh, the, uh, and the access for those roof decks? Uh, the access is by hatch, as shown on the plans. Uh, I do understand the board's position on hatches. I had this conversation. Uh, my client would 
uh, prefer uh, to keep the hatches as they do provide safer means of access for certainly uh, you know, anyone who's elderly or, or mobility impaired. Um, but again, I do understand that but the board- this won't be an elevator building? Uh, this is a, no, this is a, a not an elevator, um, no, this is not an elevator building. I'm sorry, this is stairs. Uh, uh, this, I don't know if I said hatch, but I meant head house. I'm, I apologize. I meant, meant head, head house. house but yeah. He understood it was head house. Yeah. So, and I understand. No, no, but, but really, the issue here that is differentiated from what we saw earlier was that the color is very clear that for a four story building, we need a stair that goes all the way up. Uh, where we granted building code in the back bay, that was because the Right, and I was going to continue to point out there are numerous uh, roof structures yeah. in, in, in the district, and that's why my client would prefer uh, to keep the, the hatches. The yeah. the thing that is the head house. Come on, come on. Uh, long day. The uh, the notable. You're, you're telling us what to do here. <laughs> no, no, not at all. I I am not <laughs> subliminally <laughs> signaling. Um, the one. Uh, aspect of this that is somewhat out of the ordinary is uh, there are eight units and seven parking spaces. Um, that is a, a reflection of the fact that there has to be ground floor living space for accessibility requirements. The thought was that uh, the, the one bedroom, 600 square foot one bedroom on the ground floor would be an entry level marketed, uh, entry level unit marketed to somebody who doesn't have a motor vehicle uh, who takes alternate modes of transportation. Uh, there is a citation on the refusal letter for insufficient off-street parking and and that's the other interesting part of that. This is that there is no off-street parking violation because under H 150, uh, the curious requirement is 0.9 spaces uh, per unit. Uh, so 0.9 times 8 is 7.2. So seven spaces actually meets code requirements for the project. And now, why were you deferred the last time? Uh, last time it was a deferral. Uh, and it wasn't. I think my colleague deferred it. I don't recall. I think it was uh, uh, perhaps the, another community meeting or the city side okay, neighborhood how association. How are the plans, Mr. Pisani? The, the, drawing, the drawings are adequate. And I do have one question just for my own education. Um, and that is, is it really feasible to do four story walk ups now? Uh, I, it does, you know, normally we're seeing four story buildings with, with, with elevators. And I know it's a marketing thing, but I'm just for my own education. I, I guess the only thing I can answer on that is, uh, you know, the market will be there. I mean, if, if somebody is not interested in, in a four-story walk-up unit, then this wouldn't be the building for them, but uh, I, I suspect that these would sell. And, and then the, the other question is that the ground floor unit is clearly the ex assess accessible unit. Correct. correct. Yes. And I do have... Um, Signatures here from 13 individuals, uh, abutters, and other residents of the neighborhood, all of whom are in support of the project. Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, John Allison, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, we would like to go on record in support. As the proponent has stated, they do have letters of support from uh, surrounding neighbors. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Lauren Miller, City Council, Bill Linehan's office, we too wish to go on record and support. Thank you. Members of the board, Madam Chair, I'm Kathy Muldowney. I live at 185 E Street, directly around the corner. And my husband and I own the condo that abuts this property, and we are in support of it. We think it fits the character of the neighborhood. We think it'll enhance the neighborhood. and. Um, it lines up with all the houses, so we, we think it will be good for our neighborhood. Thank you. Okay. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? May I have a motion, please? I make a motion to approve with um, continued BPDA design review. Hatch or no hatch? I, I, I think Mr. Mazzani was indicating that uh, hatch is not objectionable yeah, my, here. My, my concern is that if approve it with a hatch, it'll come back to us uh, when they go for the building permit because it'll be a building code violation because it's a four-story building and a stair has to go from all the way up. 
So you're uh, so you're proposing a hatch because to oh, no head house. A head house. And okay. I misspoke on that so many times. So I'm just going to let Mr. Pisani speak. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Madam Chair, the next case, BOA 713-469-616-620, to 620, Mass Ave has withdrawn, so it's a motion for, uh, make a motion for denial without prejudice. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. So we have two cases left. I'll be calling BOA 719-517-265 7, Hancock Street. This is a demo of the existing structure and building new, new construction of a three-family wood frame building. Violation to Article 65, Section 41. Parking is insufficient. Article 65, Section 9, lot area is insufficient. Article 65, lot width is insufficient. Article 65, lot frontage is insufficient. Article 65, floor area ratio is excessive. Article 65, the maximum stories is excessive. Article 65, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. Article 65, Section 9, front yard is insufficient. And Article 65, Section 9, rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Harold Raymond, 998 Metropolitan Ave, Milton. Abraham Alvarez, 89 Almila Avenue, Dorchester. Um, so tell us why you were deferred the last time. Uh, in, we were deferred because the Neighborhood Association approved a two-family. We proposed a three-family. And uh, we came back with a two-family design. We submitted that to 1010 Mass Ave. So uh, basically, it's a uh, two bedroom on the first floor, which is about uh, 850 square feet. There's a duplex upper unit, which is about 1,700 square feet and, and contains four bedrooms. There is a uh, driveway on the side of the property. So, which violations are extinguished then? Are you meeting the parking requirement now with the two, two, two family? Uh, yes. Yes. How many parking spaces are you providing? Uh, it's a long driveway, so it's going to have to be back to back. Do you proposing tandem parking? Yeah. Okay. Um, lot area, lot width, you can't help that. Lot frontage, tell us about the FAR. Uh, basically, we're proposing about the... Uh, 2,400 square feet, the lot 1,600 square feet. So that's about two something? Yeah. Two, yeah. Uh, height, number of stories? Uh, three stories. Okay. Side yard, front yard, rear. How are the plans, Mr. Pisani? The plans are adequate. Um, there is no occupiable space in the basement. Is that no. correct? There's only, only common space. Yeah, common okay. space. Thank you. What is the uh, width of the proposed driveway? Uh, the width of the driveway. Yeah, width of the driveway is uh, nine and a half feet. So you can't do back to back. Uh, no, the 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 width the the, the length is about almost uh, sixty feet. Yeah, no, no, I understand that, but I mean nobody can get around anybody. Right, it'd be ten. Well, yeah, but there's not even any room to maneuver at all. Okay. Um, any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, Flavia De Vega, Mayor's Office, Neighborhood Services. Mayor's Office would like to support the two family. They did go back to the community uh, with the plans for two family to support the two family. Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe McEachran, City Councilor, Frank Baker's office, we'd like to go on record and support. Thank you. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? We have a motion, please. Motion to approve with the BPDA's design review. And this, and this is just to confirm that what we've seen is a two family. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. You're all set with that proviso. Good luck. Thank you. Calling BOA 726-374, 18 Armandine Street. This is a change to a three-family dwelling, updating electrical, mechanical, plumbing systems, updated interior, exterior, build a three-story red deck and exterior egress, and a full shed dorm on the side to increase from two and a half story to a three-story. Violation of Article 65, Section 9, a lot area for each additional dwelling 
Article 65, Section 9, building height is excessive. Article 65, Section 9, front yard is insufficient. And Article 65, Section 9, side yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Attorney John Fulgini, 10 Forbes Road, Braintree. Uh, with me today is James Christopher from uh, Roach, Chris, Roach Christopher Architecture, as well as Brian Karens, who's the owner developer of this project. So, can you tell us why you were deferred the last time? We deferred just because the um, we, we didn't have a chance to meet with the um, neighborhood group because they weren't meeting over the summertime. So we wanted to schedule that before we came okay, forward. So, so then speak to us about the proposal. Sure. So this was an existing illegal three-family. It's a multi-family neighborhood. Um, the, it was a terrible eyesore in the community. Um, the proposal here is to and the zoning here is a 3F 5,000. The lot size before you is 6,000 square feet. The proposal is to have three two-bedroom, two-bath units. Um, we have, as Mr. Fortune um, just read out, the front yard is insufficient. That is a, we're not move, we're not expanding anything about the footprint. That's so, an existing. So front yard and side yard are existing. That is existing, correct. Okay, so talk, and lot area, so tell us about the height. The height is uh, conforming. It's less than 35 feet. The problem is the number of stories. That was what the violation was. And so, tell us how parking is being accommodated. Sure. So the parking in this neighborhood is one per unit. So there's four parking spots provided. Uh, we had um, an abutters meeting that was very well attended. Um, the neighbors were very supportive of this, specifically as it relates to parking on that street, as well as a, um, a meeting with the civic organization. And again, they were very supportive of this project. This house has been, there was a, a terrible uh, rodent infestation. Um, they were really happy that somebody's taking it on. It's, it's really an eyesore for the community. And is that garage stained? That's being raised. The garage is coming down, and uh, there'll be four parking spots in the rear of the building. How are the plans, Mr. Pizzani? The plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, Jawan Skeens, Councilor Campbell's office, I'd like to go on record in support of this project. Madam Chair, member of the board, Ruth George, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, this will be my last case for my office as I will be going to BCYF. I want to thank you all for your service. Um, and our office would like to go on record of support. We had an abutters meeting that was well attended, and abutters came and discussed their um, support and concerns. And their concerns were around transportation, and we communicated with them that we can assist them with potentially getting resident permit parking on that street as this. Um, the, this development does not actually impede on parking. There's four parking spots that are behind the actual property, so they're not actually adding any more to the neighborhood. So we'd like to go and record and support. Thank Best you. Best wishes on your new endeavors. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, on behalf of City Council at Large, Michael Flaherty, the council to go and record and support. Thank you. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? May I have a motion, please? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We're all set. Thank you very much. The meeting is now adjourned.